this afternoon for college football at Guidry Stadium in Thibodeau, Louisiana. The Southland Football League here on Fox Sports Net today. It's a matchup of the Southland and the SWAC. The ninth ranked Grambling Tigers taking on Nickel State. Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Eschenfeld alongside Gary Reasons. Glad to welcome you to Louisiana, and this one should be fun today. A couple of teams going at it, heading in really good directions right now. Talk about Grambling right off the top. And how about Doug Williams? That's a gutsy move. He's got a 7-0 ball club. He changes quarterbacks, but hey, he does those kind of things. Well, last week he put Bruce Eugene in there at quarterback, and I tell you, just a true freshman. Did a pretty good job, 349 yards passing on the day. But they took their number one quarterback, Randy Himes, put him at X receiver. Might have been a great move. He got eight catches last week, and expect good things from him today. You talked about him. He's just too good of an athlete not to be on the field. He wanted him the ball in his hands, so he did that. Now, as far as Nickel State is concerned, they've been a very good football team here at home. Not so good on the road, but they want to finish strong at Guidry Stadium. Well, they've changed things around here. At home, they've done very well, 28 points a game. On the road, not so well, but they play better in Guidry Stadium. They run uh, a triple option attack now on offense, and that's what makes them go. Well, if a, guy, if a triple option is going to go, it's all going to start with the guy under center. So far, Josh Sun has had it rolling. Well, Josh Sun has done a great job. He's averaging about 80 yards a game, Kevin, for this football team here at Nichols State. And when he goes, this football team goes. He needs to produce today for the Colonels to do well. All right, Nichols State will get it done on the ground. Grambling wants to get it done through the air. Grambling, the ninth ranked team in the land, taking on Nickel State Southland Football League action here on Fox Sports Net. Doug Williams sees his team off to a 7-1 start while Daryl Day, he'll get his troops fired up. Ball game is next. They won the toss and they've elected to take the football as John Manley will kick it away. Transfer Shaker Heights, Ohio. Transferred from Toledo. Back deep, Kendrick Shanklin and Derek Wallace for Grambling. Grambling coming off their first loss of the season. They lost last week in a shootout, 45-38 to Alabama State. Left footer gets his foot into it, and we are underway. Shanklin will let it go out of the back of the end zone, so Grambling will have the football. This high-powered offense, first down and 10 from the 20-yard line, an offense that scores 39 points per game and can put 410 yards per game on the field, or 410 yards a game. This is very, very good offense. Bruce Eugene, the man will be calling the signals. A red shirt freshman, 6'1", 235 pounds. The guys up front, James Thomas, Medivia, and then Riley and Jackson. They're very good on the offensive line. Backs and receivers, Brad Hill, leading rusher on this team. John Petty, the tight end. Levi Washington, Himes, the guy to keep an eye on, the former quarterback, playing receiver now. And here we go, first down and 10. And it off, second man. Right up the middle, couple of, not a whole lot there as Brad Hill scrambles ahead for a gain of three yards on first down. Second down and seven coming up. Nickel State defense. The guys up front, Gary. Well, they made a change up front. They put Todd Rivera at the defensive end for his middle linebacker spot. He's going to give him some upfield pass rush today. Torian Thomas has played very well at the strong linebacker position for the Colonels. And in the secondary, they start two freshmen at safety, David Willis and Gareth DeBetta. They have to play well back there today against this Tiger offensive attack. From Bruce Eugene under center on second down and seven. Straight drop to throw. He'll roll the pocket plenty of time. And he'll go down. A lost a couple on the play. Had a lot of time. That was a complete coverage sack. Doug King was the man who finally is going to get credit for the sack, but it'll back grambling up a couple more yards and a big third down coming up on the opening possession. Well, Nichols plays defense with speed, Kevin. They put good, good coverage people out there. Their secondary did a good job on that play, and big Bruce Eugene, the quarterback, rolls out and couldn't find anybody, anybody open. I don't think he's going to run with the football a lot today. He wants to throw the ball down the, down the field. They've got very athletic receivers at Grambling, and he's going to try to find them today. Yeah, Darrell Day was worried about that pass rush. He knew they needed to get some pressure on the Grambling quarterback, and that time they did. This time from the shotgun. Rambling on third down. Again, time to throw. Does caught at the 31 yard line. It'll be enough for a Grambling first down as the drive will continue. Sonika McMillan had the coverage, but Ellis Spears, 6'3, 180, was able to pull it in. His 26th reception of the season. Well, Spears on the outside. He's going to run and get outside. And Quarterback's going to deliver it to him. He's going to come back and juggle the football. Almost sneak, almost knocks it out. But uh, he's able to come down with the football. Good job that time of finding the open receiver. Good protection by the Tigers' offensive line and allowing the quarterback, Eugene, to throw the football. Needed nine, got 11. First down and 10, Grambling. 
again, Hill, he is met immediately. Michael Peck, the 6'3", 300-pound junior, was there to step in the hole, and when he steps in a hole, you know it. He is a big guy. I saw him on the field before the football game. I tell you, he's a mountain of a man down there. When he plays inspired football inside for the Colonels, he's going to take away way the inside running game, which is what Darrell Day wants from his defense. Good power inside and get in the backfield for a tackle for a loss. As Burnell Taylor, they had him by an ankle as well. It's going to be a second down and 11. The official, the referee, made an announcement. It was something to the effect of someone at the line of scrimmage calling signals. Well, sometimes the defense calls out signals for them that they make adjustments, and that can oftentimes confuse the offense, and that is a penalty, and so they're warning the defense. And throws this one complete. It's going to be short of the first down out to the 36-yard line where Lester McGee did a nice job as he was there to make the stop. And McGee oh, there on Levi Washington and not enough for a first down, so third down coming. Nifty grab here by Washington. Watch him go up. The ball is completely behind him. It turns him around, and good job of catching the football. A third down and five. Rambling has already converted on its one third down try so far in the early on in this ball game. The opening drive of the ball game. First time these two teams have met here at Gedry Stadium since 1983. Rambling won that matchup. Throw it in the flat, incomplete, and it'll be punt time for Grambling as they were trying to find the open man, Kendrick Shanklin. He was open, but overshot him a little bit, Bruce Eugene. So fourth down coming, and it will be time for Marcus Yanez to come in and punt it away. Freshman from Bastrop, Louisiana. I think you'll try to see, you'll see Grambling do that, try to be, get the ball to Shanklin on the outside today. He's a great punt returner, good in the open field, and want to get his hands on the football today. Lawan Walker goes back deep. This guy was booming some in pregame. Look at Lawan Walker, freshman from Tallahassee, Florida. Low snap, but he got it away. Good punt, all things considered. He rolled dead at the 37-yard line. So that's where the Colonels will have the football to start first down and 10. Decent field position early on in Thibodeau. Colonels with the ball when we return. Doug Williams in his fourth season, 29 and 12, winning 69% of his ball games. while Daryl Day in his third at Nickel State. I'm going to build this program along. Man, you talk about a guy 100 miles an hour all the time. Let me tell you about some of the stories about what he does to fire his ball club <laughs> up a little bit later on. Fire his ball club up, maybe injure himself. But uh, he is he's a unique coaching perspective, that's for sure. Fun guy to be around. So, Nickel State with the football. First down and 10 from the 37-yard line. Here's the option attack. They hand it to Coletti, and Coletti gets out near the 45-yard line. They can hit you quick, and they did right there. A gain of eight yards. Calvin Pearson, the strong safety, made the stop. This is the way they line up. Josh Sun, a sophomore from Baton Rouge, 6'2", 200 pounds. You see the numbers. More, much more of a runner. The big guys up front, they are not that big. 250, they got some guys that just, just don't really match up on the other side. They have to beat them in different ways. And you see the guy that they'll go to is Colt Coletti, the guy they just handed it off to that time. And Josh Sun, true option quarterback. Three out of the last five games, he's rushed for 100 yards here on the end of round. First down out near midfield goes Phillip Brock. And Brock... Well, he averages six yards a carry, and you see why there. Calvin Spears, the cornerback, made the stop. Take, out, take a look at the defense. Well, this triple option attack is going to be a challenge for the Grambling Tiger defense up front. Their defensive line have to play discipline, and Antoine Arnold is going to handle the inside. And The linebackers are excellent here. Robert Taylor, a prototype middle linebacker, has a has great body size and makes a lot of plays. And the two cornerbacks on the outside for Grambling just lights out. Calvin Spears and Chris Brown, really excellent players on the corners. 6'3", 200 on one of those corners. That is a big cornerback. For first down and 10. Opening minutes of the ballgame here in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Option play again. 
Pitching back a gain of a couple. Not a whole lot there for Rudy August. That's his first carry of the game. They'll spread it around. They've had games where two different, three different players have carried it ten times in a game. And so far, Coletti's carried it once. Brock has carried it once. August has carried it once. Now it's Josh Sun's turn. Well, you saw right there on that first play from, from the scrimmage, Kevin, for the Colonels. It's a triple option attack. You can hand off inside to the fullback, or the quarterback's going to read down and read the defensive end and possibly make the pitch, which he did that time. Grambling has to play real precise defense. They're assignment-oriented today, something they haven't seen all year. They're going to free play here. There's not going to be a whole lot there. Somebody was in the neutral zone on the far side. May have been Ron Johnson. Well, what happens, the defense has to choose how they want to play, and they can be aggressive, come across the line of scrimmage and get in the backfield and disrupt the option attack of the Colonels. In this case, they're trying to do a little pressure outside stunt and stepped across the line and going to have an offside penalty. On the defense, five yards remains. Second down. Well, that's the choice the defense quarter has to make, whether or not you're going to be able to attack. You're going to see here come across and get into the neutral zone before the while the ball is snapped, and that's a penalty and a free play for the Colonels. They'll go second and short now. There's Alexis Robinson, second down coming up, buddy. Gringus is our referee. Second down and two. Coletti the fullback. Son wants to throw it. Has a man wide open. Complete down to the 15-yard line and out of bounds there is Philip Brock. There was no one in the coverage at all. But Philip Brock is number two coming around from the weak side. He goes behind the line of scrimmage. You're going to see him here line up and then just get to the outside. Josh Son is going to be a roll this way. You can see he just came around the outside and nobody is there in coverage. The free safety has to get over, but he's unable to do so. Good job by the Colonels. Good execution and a good play call. The design is well executed. The corner goes inside and the tailback comes around and the free safety can't get over the top. Gain of 27 yards, stepped out of bounds. Just inside the 19, first down and 10 for the Colonels. Again, Sun on the option, not a whole lot there, still struggles ahead. Antoine Lawrence got him, big number 94, 6'2", 270, but he was able to score it away from that and still pick up a couple of yards. Nickel State, Kevin, this, this season has made some big plays in the offensive side of the, of the field. They made, they've, they've scored quickly. You think of an option attack and just basically grinding it out. They don't always do that. The big play on the offense, throwing the football, you see Sun throwing it down. They're capable of passing the ball as well. I've talked to Jeff Richards, their offensive coordinator. He said the key to this football game for them, though, is just still to maintain control of the football and not make mistakes. That was a gain of one, second down, making a gain of two, second down and eight. Again, Sun trying to get the corner, cuts it back against the grain and down near the 10-yard line. He's going to be short of a first down, so a third down and short is coming up as Calvin Pearson was there to make the stop to strong safety. Good read by Sun that time on the option. Going down, you think he might pitch the football on the outside, but watch Taylor, number 54, come into your picture. He's going to be the linebacker. Going to go inside of him. Good job that time by Son of reading the pursuit of the defense, and they're over-pursuing. The speed of the defense can be a negative for you when you play an option attack. Notice number 54, Robert Taylor, running by there. Looked a little big. That's because he is. How about a middle linebacker going 6'4", 255? That's my kind of linebacker. Oh, man. <laughs> Brock dropped it, picked it up. He's not going to have the first down. It will be close, though. In fact, play, well, you got a penalty marker down at the other end, at the other side of the field. It's sideline infraction, so this will be a warning. Well, the pursuit here by the defense. They don't win the corner on offense. There's no blocking here. One, so timing is all disrupted. Good job by the defense of pursuing and stringing out this. This Grambling defense has a lot of speed, Kevin. They'll be able to track him down to the sideline if that's the game they want to run. They need to use that misdirection inside and keep him in there on some handoffs to win that corner as well. So it's a fourth down and two. And they're going to go for it. That was at the 11-yard line. The line to make appears to be just inside the nine. Kind of a gutsy call here by Darrell Day to go for it. Going to be the quarterback and he's got it. First down and goal to goal for Nichols State down near the five-yard line. Josh Sun kept it himself. Terrence Duke made the stop. Well, that's a pretty gutsy call by Darrell Day. The quarterback's going to fake it down the line. It's actually it's going to be a lead play. Coletti's going to come in and block behind him. You see the trap outside. Good job by the offensive execution. 
And Josh Dunn squirts into the five yard line. First and goal as the clock continues to move early on, about midway through the first quarter. Opening possession of the game, starting back on the 37 yard line for Nichols State. Colonel's looking for its third win of the season. Son, nothing there. Maybe to the four. Robert Taylor coming from his linebacker spot just ate that one up. He's going to run inside out on the football all day. It's going to be a decision of how they want to block the middle linebacker. Here he is right here. He's going to just scrape and make the play. Watch Sun as he comes down the line of scrimmage. The fake inside. The linebacker just coming pacing inside out and kabam right there. Robert Taylor is a big guy who can run as well, Kevin. Josh Sun is 6'2", 200 pounds. Not a small quarterback by any means. And he can... He's made to look a, little, a lot smaller when those big linebackers come out. Second down and goal from the four. Coletti right up the middle. Touchdown, Nichols State. A 63-yard drive right out of the gate for the Nichols State Colonels, and they lead it six to nothing with a point after to come. Excellent drive set up here by the pass to Phillip Brock. And what Jeremy Smith going to get a crease here, and Coletti's just going to pop in there right behind him. Good hole, good trap block on from the backside, and Coletti just powers it in. They wanted him to play and play well today. He missed last week with a, with a strained neck, and they're glad he's back in the lineup, Kevin. Point after, and he missed it. That could be big. So 6.48 to go. They put six on the board, but that is all. And the Colonels are in charge right now. Six to nothing. Straight week, Daryl Day's ball club scores first. They lead it six nothing. Colt Coletti from four yards. Well, good blocking inside. We talked about the trap inside. And Yardy Johnson, the left guard, comes around, does a good job. And Jeremy Smith just watch him open up the hole here inside. And Colt Coletti powers it in. Good job by the Colonels taking that opening possession Kevin and putting points on the board big play in that drive 27 yard pass Josh son to Philip Brock and set him up in good stead at the 17 yard line and took it in from there six nothing after the point after was missed Grambling try it for the second time Shanklin and Wallace back deep This is Shanklin from the goal line. But not a lot there. Out to the 15-yard line and just a bunch of red jerseys. And now Grambling will start there at about the 16 for their second offensive possession of the ball game. Talked about Daryl Day getting this team fired up, and that's exactly what has come out here. Colonel's done a good job in their first series on defense. The offense has responded and put points on the board, and it's just translated into the special teams and coverage, and whenever you can stop a team to make them start inside their own 20, in this case at the 15 or 16-yard line, that little momentum on your side, and now the Grambling Tiger is going to have to come out and try to respond. Bruce Eugene's got to get comfortable at the helm there throwing the football. Travis Douglas was down there in the special teams coverage, the first man to get to him. Now Bruce Eugene, like you said, brings his ball club out. Brad Hill, the single setback. They'll hand it to Hill, a leading rusher. Back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a gain of a yard, but not a whole lot there. It's Todd Rivera, the converted middle linebacker, playing defensive end today. We talked about him. They wanted him for the pass rush. He was there to make the stop on the running play. He's actually the backside defensive end making the plays. You see Hill's numbers on the season. Pretty good job running for the Tigers this year. Almost 800 yards. Doug Williams, I talked to him before the game. He said he needs his tailback to run well today for this offense to go take a little pressure off that quarterback. A second down and nine. Pressure coming from the backside. Eugene steps up. And out to the 30-yard line, very near. It's going to be plenty for a first down. He'll have it by a couple of yards. He's a load when he gets rolling at 6'1", 235. Michael Griffin made the stop. Well, the pressure from the defense is good. Watch Rivera, number 40, on the outside. He's going to take an outside release and get right around to the quarterback, Eugene. And pretty good move there, hand up and arm underneath. Just misses the tackle. And 
Tell you what Rivera has, he's got a, actually he's got an injury, a hamstring injury, and just uses his speed here. Good job, good technique, but take a look at the quarterback. He does a good job of finding some good green grass to run in and gets a first down for the Tigers. Fumble the snap, we'll take it ahead. Still was able to bounce right back up to him, and he took it ahead for a gain of one, so second down is coming up. I was talking about Rivera. He, he's been kind of hobbled by a hamstring injury. That's why as it really he's not going to play linebacker and drop into coverage, but they feel like he can run up the field and put some pressure on the quarterback as he did that time. But they've got to have better contain this quarterback. He's not, not known to run the football. Hasn't seen a lot of him out of the pocket, but it showed on that last play that he can run it pretty well. well you talk about that defensive line. Now, Daryl Day, he'll use some people in that defensive line. In fact, last week against Stephen F. Austin, played 11 different players in that front four. Because he figures, well, I got him, may as well play him. He throws this one, he picked up. James Miller, and he'll bring it back to the 25, the 20, and down to the 10-yard line. 6'3", 250-pound sophomore from Meridian, Mississippi, makes a huge play, and the Colonels are set up in great shape again. Well, Miller's playing an inside linebacker because Todd Rivera, number 40, is going to play the defensive end position today, and Miller does a good job in coverage. But Rivera, again, gets in on the quarterback, going to put the pressure there, and linebacker's going to drop back, and I don't know who he's throwing the football to. He's got a receiver in the back here. Throws it short underneath, and Miller does a nice job of picking it off. It's just zone defense, zone coverage by the Colonels, and a big play here with the interception. 27-yard return, and the ball is set at the 8-yard line. Well, when Rivera's coming with that much pressure on the quarterback gonna make him throw it off time and that ball was well short and good job that time by Miller picking it off. Paletti the setback. It's Brock in motion. And hand it to Coletti for the five touchdown. How about this for Nickel State, putting it on the number nine team in the country. Right now it is 12 to nothing. Well, it looked like there wasn't much here. You got Robert Taylor missing a tackle inside, and Colt Coletti just showing the heart and drive and desire that he has as a fullback and bouncing through there. They, all the coaches that I've talked to about this young man, they say a lot about him, his character, working hard, and missed a game last week, but his second rush down, the rush, rushing touchdown today. Shows you that they want him in that lineup, and he's a big part of that offense. Well, he ranks eighth in the Southland Football League in rushing just a freshman from River Ridge, Louisiana. And now they'll go for two, try to make it 14 after missing the extra point on the first touchdown. Again, the option, he dropped the ball, and it'll be no good. So Grambling holds on the two-point conversion, but Nickel Stain having its way right now. They lead it 12 to nothing here in the first. Plays in this one for Nichols State. This time it was James Miller's interception return of 27 yards, and Colt Coletti took it in from there. Just playing his middle linebacker spot, and Miller does a nice job just finding himself in the hole there and returning it for a pretty good gain here down to the 10 yard line. And then Colt Coletti, the next play, just takes it right up into the house for the score. Good job here by the Colonels being opportunistic and putting points on the board. Daryl Day's ball club, thanks to that long drive of nine yards on one play. This is up by a score of 12 to nothing. So for the third time in this game, Nickel State will kick it away again. John Manley to Kendrick Shanklin. Back out to the 15-yard line, Shanklin gets free. Out to the 25 near the 30-yard line. Good field position for Grambling to start on this drive. Now Melvin Spears, the offense coordinator for Grambling, has to find a way to get his offense on track here. The quarterback through the interception, but now they've got good field position outside their 30-yard line and going to send his troops out there, hoping for a little better opportunity to move the football. Will it be Bruce Eugene or will it be Randy Himes? It'll be Randy Himes coming back in at quarterback. So Himes, who is 17 and 1 as a starter before being moved to wide receiver, back in at quarterback now. They hand it to Hill. Go back to the line of scrimmage. They lose the football. It's on the ground. Who's got it?
Well, Nickel State was definitely trying to wrestle the ball away from him inside, and I think they may have pulled it out and Hill doesn't come have up it. I know it. that much. It's Nickel State football. Well, I think Doug Williams made the choice there to change quarterbacks. He told me before the game, Kevin, he didn't expect to change, but as you hand off inside on the draw play here to Hill, watch the defense tackle the football. That's Rivera. Rivera, number 40, he's got his hand in there on the football and just continues to pull it out and strips it out. Good job by the defensive opponent. Well, I think Rivera may actually have got it back himself. He did. Two yeah. hands on the football at the bottom of the pile. Take a look here on the left side. Brings his hand in. The ball's going to fall to the ground and see who comes in here. It's going to be two hands right there. I think it is Rivera, number 40, pulling it out. Yeah, good pressure on the quarterback by Rivera today, and now a big play on the cause, fumble, and recovery. Played a pretty good job and pretty good game for that defensive end spot so far. Second straight turnover for Grambling. Option again. Brock to the 25 and wrestled down there. Looked like he was going to get away from Robert Taylor for a moment, but only for a brief moment. Taylor able to recover. Went to Birmingham Parker High School. He's an outstanding looking linebacker with Philip Brock, sophomore. They call it the counter ISO here. They got the backside guard and tackle. And the halfback coming around. It's the old counter tray play the Washington Redskins run, but they run it out of the wishbone attack. Good job of execution. You got Matt DeRoche, number 72, the offside tackle coming over and blocking well. A little misdirection from this offense as well. Instead of Coletti just running it right up the middle. Out of the 29-yard line, where it's second down, but it's six. Brock again. Brock fighting his way down near the 20. When a third down is to come, Terrence Duke made the stop, along with Denmark Reed for Grambling. One thing the Grambling Tiger defense has to contend with today, Kevin, is cut blocks and blocks below the waist and scramble blocks. A lot of times they're playing offensive teams that are going to run power football, but with this option attack that the Colonels run, they use scramble blocks. They don't have the big offensive line where they're going to power people, so they're going to use a little misdirection and scramble and cut block, and that's a little different for the defenders to have to play play against. They're not used to seeing that all the time, and it's a, it's a tough changeup for them to have to co compete with. You got a left guard goes 250. You got a one that's 285. While those are big men. It is still not big as far as offensive linemen go. Colt Coletti running big and has a first down inside the 15-yard line down to the 12. Calvin Pearson saved the touchdown, but good, tough nose running here. Well, everything stopped up inside, and Coletti just bounces the outside, and Calvin Pearson just kind of hung on for dear life to make sure he didn't allow a score. Grambling Tiger defense is getting all they want today. 1st well, and 10, call it officially the 13-yard line. And Josh Sun, the quarterback for this Colonel team, they come into this one 2 and 6, but they look like the favorite right now, and that went incomplete. He was looking for Thurman Lewis. And it was maybe held up a little bit, but good coverage. It'll be a second down and 10 coming out. It's the first time today. The Josh Sun has attempted a back, beg your party. He completed one earlier, a big 27-yard completion. That's the second pass attempt of the day. Yeah, just spread it out and go ahead and run you a quick slant. Try to get someone in the post. Calvin Spears, the cornerback on the outside, did a nice job of not allowing the clear path, and Sun, Sun's pass goes up and out of bounds. Four wide receiver set. And they hand it to Coletti again, and Coletti spins down to the 10-yard line where a big third down is coming up. And third down and long, they have to get down to the three, so it'll be a third down and seven to come. Well, they're going to try to get as much as they can with Coletti inside. And good job that time by Robert Taylor, the middle linebacker, scraping and making a play. Got some big people up front for the defensive front of uh, Grambling. Kevin got big Willie Gray in there, and 285-pounder, and Antoine Lawrence doing a good job inside and making Coletti bounce outside and let the linebacker scrape and make a play. But to get just inside the three for the first down. The third down and seven. Last couple of minutes of the first quarter. Sun throwing this one for Brock out of the back of the end zone. So fourth down is coming up. And John Manley will come on, try to make it a 15-point Colonel lead. Manley missed an extra point on the first touchdown and tried to redeem himself here with three. You see his numbers on the year three of nine. Not real productive. He's had one block this year. And 
Arkansas, the one hit the goalpost on the extra point. Not a lot of confidence in this Colonel kicker right now. He needs to get something to the post. He has made three of his last four. We'll give him that. We'll he'll see here the left footer from 28 yards out. Had it blocked. So it stays at 12 nothing. Somebody came through. It may have been Calvin Spears. It appeared to have gotten a hand on it. And we'll take a look here. The kick will see if he's driven or the ball gets up in the air and releases. And I don't know if it was the. Did this, did it wasn't anybody? Calvin Spears. He was blocked okay. out. But maybe number 18 or 19, Chris Brown, coming from his outside, gets a hand on it right there at the top where we had pressure inside. Nonetheless, it's Colonels do not convert for the three points. Yep, and you see the laces here. They're turned backwards, which is facing this way. The kicker usually wants the laces facing forward so that he can get a clean shot on the football. But still at that distance, he should be able to get that ball up in the air. Himes throws this one complete to Tremont Douglas. Himes staying back in at quarterback. He came back in for Bruce Eugene on the last possession. Well, I don't think there's an injury with Eugene. I think that just being a freshman and getting down here two scores, they want to put a guy out there with more experience, so they're going to put Himes back at the helm. And unfortunately, on the last series, they had the fumble, but they got the ball back here. And I would expect that if things go well again, that you might see Bruce Eugene back at the quarterback spot. Himes looks like he's checking off the line of scrimmage. Straight drop to throw. Comes near side, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Chris Hyshaw. And Himes will spread it around. He's done that since he's come back into the ballgame. Go to a lot of different receivers. That's one Hyshaw should have caught. Well, Randy Himes, when he moved to uh, X receiver last week, caught eight balls, Kevin. Over 100 yards received. And the, and the NFL scouts, you know, talked to Doug Williams and said, hey, this guy looks good at X receiver, and he'll leave him out there. And, and Doug really thinks that that's probably his more of his natural position anyway. So they're trying to put the best 11 on the field as they can, and they wanted to go with Eugene at quarterback, but things didn't go well early on. He's big, six foot four, 200 pounds, and he's got a gun, and he guns this one. Complete to High Shaw again to the 45 to the 47-yard line, and Gramley finally getting the offense rolling. A big gainer there. Well, High Shaw is one of the young men on the outside. Good height, 6'4", 180 pounder. You see his numbers on the year. Good speed. Doug Williams told me that he's got about 4'4 speed. And I'll tell you, this tremendous athlete is going to come from the right side of your screen. He's going to thread this ball in there between coverage. Himes delivers on target, and then he runs after the catch. That's what's impressive about these grounding receivers. You might throw shorter routes, but they're going to continue on down the field. Gain of 25 out to the 46-yard line. Himes on first down and 10. He'll go for the deep ball. Has man coverage. An incomplete. Overshot the intended receiver, receiver Ellis Spears on the far sideline. The second down coming up. You know, Himes shows me he's got some arm here. He throws the ball down. It's a 60-yard pass from where he's going to throw the football down here all the way to the outside. And good job here. And good pressure up front here. They're going to try to get back to Himes and get late pressure on him. But he steps in. Pretty good ball here. And he just out throws the, the speed of the receiver. Second down and 10 coming from the 46-yard line. This is something... Nichols had to be concerned about with their smaller defensive backs having to cover these six three and six foot four receivers that can fly. Yeah, and two freshmen, two freshmen starting at the safety spot for the Colonels and can have a pretty good task here today holding these guys. They lost their two safeties to begin with. Here comes the blitz that set up the screen. Kendrick Shanklin has room to run inside Nichols territory, lost the football. I believe he got it back. James Miller knocked it loose, but Kendrick Shanklin got it back, and a big break for Grambling there after a gain of 14. Well, when you set the screen play up, you want to have the defense coming on pressure, which is what they have here, and you can have Shanklin on the backside come across, and you're going to see him drop it over to him. But watch the pursuit of the defense, number 56, you know, coming from the backside. Watch his hand get in there on the football. James Miller does a nice job of knocking it out. Rambling going where they haven't gone today. That's inside Colonel territory down at the 41 yard line. Here comes the pressure again. Times will roll the pocket. Has room to run. 
to the 30 and runs out of bounds at the 27 yard line. I tell you what, Randy Himes can fly and he's one of those guys that you know he's running fast but he doesn't look like he's doing it. Another gain of 14 yards. I'll tell you who he surprised the most is number 32, Torian Thomas, their outside linebacker. Torian's going to come through on a blitz and he's got him right here dead to rights but watch the speed of Himes come all the way around the corner to say hey, I'm going to turn it into the third and fourth gear here and just outrun the defense and smartly jumps out of bounds. From the 27 yard line, first down and 10. The penalty marker goes down. Crossman on the offense. Five yards, first down. Crossman usually is the defense. I think the referee means it's false start. Nonetheless, a five yard penalty here for the Tigers. Boy, Doug Williams wants an explanation. <laughs> How do you have encroachment on the offense? That's, you know, that's. He's got a great point. That's a defensive offsides penalty. It's a good word, encroachment. I, I don't even know how to spell it. But... Came from the side judge as well. That's. Or the line judge, I should say, here to the near side. That's the appropriate official to call that. They'll see, the, see someone in the neutral zone across the football. So Himes hands it off. Shanklin, Shanklin. This is well played defensively for Nichols State. There wasn't a whole lot there. Travis Douglas, the backup outside, strong side linebacker, making the stop for the Colonels. And that should be the last play of the first quarter. Douglas does a nice job pursuing down the line and Shanklin back in the backfield. Good speed, good ability. They want to get the ball in his hands a lot today. Well, 15 minutes of college football in the books here in Thibodeau, Louisiana. The end of a first quarter dominated by the home team, the Colonels. But the Grambling Tigers, ninth in the country. They're rolling right now on offense. Second quarter action when we return in a moment. Looking good right now for the Colonels. Nickel State on top 12 nothing, but Grambling at the offense cranked up and they're driving down to the 30 yard line right now. A concern for that man, Daryl Day. See his team take advantage of a couple of turnovers. Talk about stepping into big shoes. Man replaced a legend. Doug Williams did. Talking about Eddie Robinson, who spent 57 years as the head coach at Grambling. Coached, of course. Doug Williams, you see some of his resume. Super Bowl MVP in Washington beat Denver. 1989. They throw this one over the middle. Incomplete. And that's a matter of being separated from the football. David Willis delivering the big hit on Chris Highshaw. It was a big hit. The safety just read that downhill, and that's what you want from your safeties. A young safety number 10 here doing a good job of just coming back when the receiver throws comes inside. Highshaw, watch here the collision. Let's go ahead and just remove him from the football. Good job that time by David Willis. Ishaw goes off to the sideline, went off on his own power, but he is hurting. They're checking out his ribs on the far side. Third down, 13. Big play for Grambling. Himes hit and brought down. One thing to hit him, there's another thing to bring him down. And that time the Colonels were able to do both. Sack back to the 30-yard line where Todd Rivera was the first man to get to him. James Miller came in and finished him off. Fourth down coming. Well, Todd Rivera, number 40, is doing a good job up front. We've talked about him. They're moving him around. They've got him inside now. And he's just going to come and continue to keep working here. And he's going to catch up with Himes. Does a good job of pulling him down. And then linebacker Miller fills in. Good coverage downfield. It was a four-deep zone coverage. And the Colonels took away everything the Himes wanted to throw to. A 48-yard field goal attempt here for Brian Morgan. He's had three blocked this year. Plenty of lag. And he's good. So the freshman from Groves, Texas, puts his ball club on the board. Early here in the second quarter. New score, Nickel State 12, Grambling 3.
Times there checking on that right knee after Todd Rivera may have had him twist his knee a little bit on that last play, but able to put some points on the board. Now, this is something Graham is going to have to improve on. They've got to be able to tackle these backs in this option attack that the Colonels employ here, getting it inside. They've got to tackle well inside. Coletti's doing a good job of running power football inside. You know, good, put some points on the board. And if they're going to play well defensively, they've got to be able to tackle. Doug Williams ball club on the board now. There's Morgan, a 47-yard field goal. Randy Himes came in, played well on that drive. Had a couple of big scrambles, a couple of big passes, three of six for 39 yards. Ran for 16 yards. That included being sacked a couple of times. Felder and Walker back deep. This is LaJuan Walker. Out to the 31-yard line for Nichols State. Pretty decent field position for the Colonels. It's an even 14 minutes on the clock here in the first half. The state scored 12 in the first quarter. Grambling with the only points here in the first 60 seconds of the second quarter. It's 12 to 3. You know, it's my first time to see this Nickel State offense, and pretty impressive what they do. The triple option attack. They take their halfbacks and line them up at the wing position. Josh Sun can go inside with Colt Coletti or one of the halfbacks coming across and. You've got the misdirection plays. A well-designed offense by Jeff Richards. Rock in motion. He's the option man, and they pitch it to him. Got the corner. Out to the 35-yard line. Gain of five yards on the play as Calvin Pearson escorted him out of bounds. With a second down coming up. Second down at five for the Colonels. We talk about three different options inside with the fullback, the quarterback, and then Philip Brock coming around from his halfback position. It's hard to defend on the defense. You have to play real discipline inside. If you forget to tackle one of those guys, it could be a big play by the offense. Let's call it second down six after a gain of four from the 35-yard line. This time more of a wishbone looking set. They hand it off to Brock. Philip Brock out to the 40, 45 to the 49-yard line. Gain of 11 yards. You count it off there. And a first down and 10 as Alexis Robinson may have saved the touchdown. I talked about it earlier. Over pursuit. Watch the linebacker number 54. Taylor come across the ball. Went too far. And Phillip Brock smartly reads it inside and breaks it back for a good game. It's where the offense is designed. Use the aggressiveness of the defense to take play to your advantage. And Phillip Brock cut it back nicely against the green. Like you said, a lot of different things for a defense to try to stop. Again, they go for more of that wishbone set. Son on the option. And Rudy August just didn't have a whole lot of running room. Picked up a couple. Lexus Robinson, a big reason why, along with Calvin Pearson, as they pursued well and were able to really cut things down. It's actually a broken play. You have the fullback come to the wrong side. Josh Son's expecting to the fake inside, but just takes it back across outside. Watch the late pitch here. It's almost a forward lateral right down the line of scrimmage. And Luckily, it wasn't a forward pass. It could have been either way. Actually, it could have been a good completed forward pass. Nobody downfield, so the offense could run it either way. Well, he got three. The player looks like he should have lost three. This time, it's Coletti right up the middle. First man through. He's out near the 45-yard line, so third down coming up. Nickel State, two and six, wins over Samford in Southwest Texas. Lost last week by two to Stephen F. Austin. Finish up the season by taking on McNeese, and then they'll go make up a game against Arkansas State. It's been a, a brutal schedule for the Nickel State. It's the tenth toughest schedule in the country to try to convert on their second, third down in this game. Need some help. Not going to get it. That one didn't really stand a chance, and they lose four on the play, so fourth down and a punt situation is coming up. Calvin Spears was out there. He played it very well, and the Colonels will have to punt it away, maybe. Well, you've got to have one more guy than they have blockers, and good job that time by the defense of the Tigers, and Darrell Day tried to, his offense tried to pitch the ball out to Travis Felder to get around the corner, but the defense did a good job in pursuit. Well, now here comes the punting team. Josh Sun went out there as if he was going to set up in shotgun formation, but 
Now they'll send James Wilcox out. Jeremy Thompson, their all-conference punter, was hurt a couple games back. So they have struggled with this. Wilcox averaging 33 yards a punt. Last week, average over 50, though, oh, Kevin. man. That's had one block. That's a good punt down to the 17-yard line. But I tell you what, Calvin Spears almost came up with a huge play. Instead, Gramley's got a long field to work with. And trailing 12 to 3. Ball club trying to get back in this ball game. Nickel State leading it 12 to 3. Well, coming up after our game here on Fox Sports Net, it's number eight Washington taking on Oregon State in the Pac-10. Then at 6, Colorado travels to Ames to face Iowa State in the Big 12 shootout. It's all coming up. College football Saturday here on Fox Sports Net. Here in Thibodeau, Louisiana, 11-10 to go in the second quarter, along with Gary Reasons, Kevin Eschenfelder with you. And Bramley with the football down at the 18-yard line. Will they have it first down and 10 to start this drive? Got a field goal on their last drive, and they trail it 12-3. to Time, straight drop. Here comes the pressure. Is it a short hop or a catch? If you're going to call it a catch. Levi Washington made the catch at the 24-yard line. But, boy, pressure all over. Torian Thomas was coming on the blitz. He hit Randy Himes hard. Well, Randy Himes sees the pressure coming from his backside. Going to bring it, get rid of the football, get it out to your hot receiver, and he stops. There's a quick comeback and makes a five- or six-yard gain for the, for the Tigers. As a defensive-minded guy, Nickel State's got to be thinking right now you can't let him sit back there, right? you gotta, you got to take some chances, sell out a little bit, try to put some pressure on the quarterback, right? you got to do both. He's such a great athlete. You don't want to pressure him. If you give him much much time or rush him just four people, he's going to be able to elude most rushes and make a positive play. Going up top. Incomplete. That was well defended. Gareth DeBetta was the man on the coverage, and he was step for step with Tremont Douglas. DeBetta had good coverage, stayed underneath. It's called a trail technique, the safety does, and you see the pressure coming on the quarterback. They're going to bring five. Count them there, and you got five red shirts. Good job making a pocket by the Tiger offensive line. Lester McGee, the weak side linebacker, he had a high ankle sprain, and he was questionable whether or not he'd play in this ball game. He just comes hobbling off the field, so have to replace him, and they will do so with Michael Griffin. Nickel State, so third down and five. Himes pressure from the backside, throws this one complete, first down. Levi Washington with the catch at the 42-yard line, beg your pardon. But it's a first down for Grambling, and Himes is making some things happen right now as D.J. Clay made the catch. Well, that's just athleticism at the quarterback position. Randy Himes finding, waiting for someone to get open, and huh? D.J. makes the play here, number 21, coming back for the football, and you have to do that when the quarterback is under duress and one of your receivers has to find an open spot, and Randy Himes does a nice job of finding it. D.J. Clay makes a catch. It's a 21-yard pickup and a first down. They convert on the third down after the 42-yard line. Again, Himes, he'll throw it again. That went incomplete. That one looked like it may have slipped out of his hand. A bit, bit of a wounded duck. Ellis Spears was the intended receiver. Second down to come. Yeah, didn't have much command of that football. It kind of slipped away from him, like you said, Kevin. See the pressure? They're going to continue to bring because they know the grounding is going to pass the football. They want to make big plays in the passing game. You see the ball come unraveled. Samika so Williams doing a good job in coverage on the outside. Second down, 10 from the 41-yard line. A couple of ticks under 10 minutes to go in the first half. Times again with time. He threw this one away. He thought his man, Ellis Spears, was going to go up. Instead, he kind of cut the pattern off. I beg your pardon, it was Chris Hyshaw, 83, not 88. Well, I think that he's getting a little bit finding the receivers trying to get down the field, and he's not getting anything open. The quarterback is just going to drop back and wait for somebody to do something. He thinks that the receiver, Highshaw is going to continue, but he doesn't. He lays it out there for him, but you see the receiver cut it short at the 30-yard line, and the ball just sails on him. A little couple quarterback miscommunication with the receivers. I'm not sure how many reps he got this week in practice. Obviously, Bruce Eugene was scheduled to start the football game. We've got Himes in there now on the third series and beyond. 
So it's third down and 10. Heim, straight drop again to throw. Has time again, throws this one. Incomplete, almost intercepted. And you're gonna get a holding penalty back around the quarterback. In the area, you wanted two things, holding or roughing the pass. And you got your holding penalty, which was be declined because a fourth down and 10 is coming up. And Andy Heim is trying to stick this ball here. Number 32, Torian Thomas does a good job in coverage. Almost makes the interception here. He's got his left arm padded on his elbow there. May not have been able to pull that ball in, though. Good job in coverage at time. And Doug Williams is trying to get his quarterback settled down and make some better decisions and throw the football. I think the Grambling Tiger offense, Kevin, is just a little bit out of sync right now. Lawan Walker will go back deep for Nickel State. Marcus Genez comes in to punt it away. 41 yard average. Here they come. How do you not block that? And it's going to be a great punt. Walker will take it at the 10 yard line. How about this? <laughs> Good heavens, a return of 14 yards. It was as spectacular as you're going to see after a 49-yard punt. We'll take a look at it when we come back to Nickel State in just a moment. State leading at 12-3, a spectacular return that should have really never been returned at all. This is why. It's just jailbreak here coming through, number 54. Watch him, Rick Bleakley, just jump right over the punter. Actually, you could have tackled him. The ball went right underneath him, and that but on the other end here, Lawan Walker does a nice job of picking it up. And watch, the, I tell you, the effort here by this young man on this return is just outstanding. That's a one-man show back there. They can't tackle this guy. It was a 14-yard return, but the one as you're going to see. I'm going to throw this one quickly to Brock. Eludes one man out to the 25-yard line to the 26, and the penalty marker comes in. And they get a holding penalty probably here against Nichols State. Calvin Pearson was the man out there. The illegal use of the hands instead of the holding penalty. It's five instead of ten. You got him probably a... Defender turned his back and you pushed him in the back and that's what you're going to get against the Colonels here. A little slip screen outside. Try to get your X receiver to block one-on-one -on, -one on the cornerback and get Phillip Brock around the corner. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. That was 10 instead of a shorter penalty. So they back him back up to the 15-yard line. So it's first down and 20 from the 15. Again, Sun on the option. Well, they strung that out. That is how you defend the option perfectly. Brock did not stand a chance. Calvin Spears got the tackle, but there's a whole lot of people need credit on that play. And Calvin Spears is a great outside cornerback and three years all swag performer and preseason All-American. See him out here. He's just going to pressure inside. and You're going to see Brock come around and get off the block, get up there and make the tackle. You're going to have to block on the outside. You're going to ask your wide receivers to block a long time when you run the option. You want to lock them up so you can run the alley. But, uh, yeah, that's a good job by the cornerback. Spears coming in and making a nice play. Well, another thing, too, a guy like John, Josh Sun takes a real beating against a real big, strong, fast defense like this one from Grambling. Again, the option. Cut it up that time and pinched it out of bounds. And go out of bounds. 17-yard line. Well, Josh Sun's running the down the line option here and watch him coming down at the end of the play. I actually think he forward laterals his football should be a penalty here against the offense, but he's going to lateral watching there. The ball does come forward. That's either an incomplete pass. Should if be he's good. behind the line of scrimmage, which he is not. Otherwise, it should be a penalty. The ball goes forward. I think one one break went that way for the Colonels on that play. Should have been an illegal forward pass. I'm going to call a timeout. A little disarray in the huddle. Josh Sun's going to call a play quickly to get the line of scrimmage. Uh, Play clock is running down. Down to 10 on the play clock. Third down, 15. Not the kind of play you want to rush from deep in your own territory. Sun from the 
gun. Throws this one incomplete. That was a, would have been anywhere close to a first down, but that time Thurman Lewis hit hard and he was hit before he did. It was actually David Laffin that wasn't able to get to it. Yeah, David Laffin gets the ball. It's going to hit him right in the chest between the numbers. Good delivery by the quarterback. It is going to be short, but you got to catch this football. It's right there. You're just probably looking down the field to see the Tiger defense coming after you. I got two words for you. Terrence Duke. That's what he was <laughs> looking at. Yeah, big Terrence is coming down there, breathing down his neck. and. Good job at time by the Tigers on defense, stopping Nickel State back in their own territory. Going to have a good opportunity for a punt return, and we've got a good one out there on the field. Wilcox to punt it away. He's a low liner. And Kendrick Shanklin, 13th ranked punt returner in the country, averaging 16 per. Won't even have to do anything on this with a very short punt out to the 34 yard line. Basically, that was the yard line they needed for the first down it's only a punt of 19 yards well that's what when you really miss your all-conference punter Jeremy Thompson who's out of the game and gone for the season actually so someone has to step up and punt the football but that was not a very good effort in the the nickel state defense is going to be tested now on on the on the short field take a look here see his drop on and I watch him in practice and his drops were not very consistent and this one just comes inside on him he kicks it off the end of his foot he knows it from the get-go and the ball just shanks off to the right side so Himes will bring his team back out. Randy Himes again, straight drop to throw, wins this one, should have been picked off. Seneca McMillan stepped in front, the senior from Orlando, the transfer from Miami of Ohio, wasn't able to hold on to the football, but he should have. Well, this is just a bad decision by the quarterback Himes. He throws the ball in the coverage, and Seneca McMillan Hey, this is a ball he needs to catch and make a big play for the Colonels on defense. When you have an opportunity for the ball to come your way as a cornerback, hey, you want to get it. A lot of times you're in man coverage, but here there's no reason for McMillan not to catch his football. He's got, got it down in the bread basket. It just pops out. Well, he threw in a triple coverage, did he not? He did. That was a poor decision to throw that football. And Himes is saying, hey, you got to come back for that football. I'll need some help here on this. And I think he's getting very frustrated out there with his offense performance. Shanklin is set back. Tried to run the quarterback draw, instead takes it back outside. Penalty marker down. Holding call is coming against Gramley. Larry Mateva, the center, preseason All-American, I believe, is going to get ticketed for 10 yards here. Well, Melvin Spears, the offense coordinator for Gramley, just trying to call a feel-good play, and that is a quarterback draw play for for his quarterback Himes to run through there and Doug Williams is trying to settle him down. His quarterback is getting a little bit harassed back there trying to throw the football and he's thrown it into good coverage by the Colonels. And Replay, second down. Well, you can see that everybody's going to allow him to come up the field here and watch on the outside. If anybody holds, it's a quarterback draw and maybe right there you got a hole right in a there. takedown. That's Brandon James, number 63, the offensive tackle. A little too much jersey in there, but you wanted to get a positive play. That's why Spears called that play for his offensive quarterback. Get something happening good, but now it brings up a second and long. 20 to be exact. Set up the inside screen. 35 down to the 30-yard line goes Ellis Spears, six foot three. Prototypical pro-type wide receiver. He's a senior from Zachary, Louisiana, and a gain of 16 yards. Well, he's a leading receiver on the football team coming into the game with 25 catches, and it's going to be the wide receiver screen to the outside. See the linemen all come inside. It's kind of a scissor screen trying to split the defense right up the middle, and good job by Ellis Spears of jumping over, getting a few extra yards, and bringing up a third and short. Third and four, pick up a 16 on a second down and 20. Quick hitter, complete, to 20. Levi Washington down to the five-yard line. And Grambling has the offense rolling right now. You know, and I like the play calling as well here on this drive. A gain of 22 yards, doing some things, stretching the defense on one play and then coming back with something safe on another. Well, you want to get the first down here. Lawan Walker, number 27, just makes, misses the tackle here. Hey, you need to make that tackle on defense to stop the, the Tigers, but still a big play for them and getting the first down and moving the sticks and keeping some momentum here going for the Tigers. 
First and goal from the five. Hill to the goal line, pushed out of bounds, short of it. Brad Hill he's got a nose for the end zone, but David Willis was there to knock him out of bounds. You know, it's gone all pass, pass, pass here for the Tigers, and haven't called Brad Hill's name since early in the first quarter when they tried to run the football a little bit, and now the Colonel's defense is trying to be stingy, keeping Hill out of the end zone in a goal line situation. From the one, second down and goal. Quarterback sneak, touchdown, Grambling. Well orchestrated drive, and the man who orchestrated it, Randy Himes, takes it in from a yard out in the quarterback sneak, and we got a new ball game. It's just a very athletic play by your quarterback. Get behind your center, Matavia, who's number 50. He's going to submarine and watch the effort and the surge and the arm stretch there by the quarterback, Himes, and he breaks the plan of the goal line, and the sideline judge calls it a touchdown for the Tigers. Brian Morgan, who kicked a field goal earlier. Extra point is good. So with five minutes and 48 seconds to go in the first half, a new score. Nickel State 12, Grambling 10. Nickel scored the first 12 points of the game. Coletti a four-yard run, and, and Coletti on an eight-yard run, but Grambling comes right back with 10 points of their own. Well, here in this stadium, you could really sense that Nickel State, Kevin, in the first quarter had a lot of momentum on their side. The two quick scores and things going well for them and their defense playing well, but now Grambling has kind of answered back. They've put Himes at quarterback. Doug Williams decides to, to pull Eugene Bruce out of there, and Bruce Eugene, rather, and put another his experienced quarterback, your senior, back at the helm. He told me before the game that uh, he didn't expect to pull the quarterback unless he was really playing poorly, but I think feeling that he's got his Tigers down a couple of scores early, he needed to put his experienced player on the field, and he's done so with Himes. 29 and 12 is the head coach at Grambling. Placed Eddie Robinson in 1997, a scoring drive, five plays, only had to go 35 yards. Really the key play to that drive was a 19-yard punt from Nickel State. Yeah, when you go with a short field like that, you're going to have to convert most opportunities like that into points, and the Tigers did a good job of it. Not a long field to go, and they just executed, and now they're back into this football game. You know, Grambling, a six-hour drive. They have a huge alumni base just about everywhere you go. It's a six-hour drive, though. We're in far southern Louisiana. Of course, Grambling, uh, way up in northern Louisiana. And they bring a ton of people. And it's a good crowd. You can see a lot of yellow and gold or black and gold on the far sideline. A lot of fans here for the Grambling Tiger Bunch. Juan Walker. Stutter steps out to the 30-yard line. Nice return of 28 yards, and Nichols will try to get something rolling on the offensive side now. Penalty marker came in. Check that. Check out what Nichols has done. They had it rolling in the first quarter, particularly the first two possessions. They forced a couple of turnovers and were able to take advantage, but just a rock-solid drive, the first drive, which... Went 10 plays. Yeah, this is where I, they had the momentum right here, but then this thing happened, the missed field goal, and then the two punts allowed the Tigers to get back into this football game. Things are kind of going their way now. The, the Colonels have to go back out there on offense. Josh Sun and company have to get something going again and move the football down the field. You know, it's a methodical offense, this triple option attack. And I tell you, when you make big plays with an offense like this, it's kind of a strange thing to do, but they're capable of running it down the field as well. There's Cole Coletti up the middle and a gain of a couple on first down. Wasn't a whole lot there. And that's the thing about this offense. Sometimes you see the little dive play like that, but it's maybe there to set things up for a, later on when you start paying too much attention to the outside. They'll hit you with a quick hitter in the middle and vice versa. And conversely, for the Tigers on defense, they haven't seen any option attacks, so to speak, of this year, and this is their first chance to see it. Hey, it's tough for them to prepare for it because they only get one week of practice, and their show team has to give it, have to give them a, an excellent picture, and they felt like they did get a good week of practice and seen it this week, but it's still not game speed. That should be enough for a first down. Josh Sun doing it himself. Denmark Reed made the stop. Josh Sun in his last five games averaging 111 yards rushing. 
14 touchdowns this season, nine rushing, five passing. It's amazing numbers. He's had, he's accounted for their last seven touchdowns coming into this ball game until Colt Coletti had the first two in this game. Here's the field position for today. Grambling on their own 28. Nickel State been a lot more opportunistic and talking more about Josh Sun. Kevin, he can get to 1,000 yards rushing for the year, and they haven't had a 1,000-yard rusher since 1996 here at Nichols. That'd be a big turnaround for this program. He's to average 121 yards a game in their final three, including today. Pitch it back to Brock. And Brock back to the line of scrimmage, and this Grambling Tiger defense is fired up right now. Chris Brown and Robert Taylor there to make the stop. Well, it's the down the line option here, and Josh Sun is going to have heat in his face, and he pitches it outside, and, and Brock is going to be the recipient of a pretty big hit here by Taylor, number 54, who comes over the top, and good job on the outside. Good pressure, and Robert Taylor, the middle linebacker, he's big, 6'4", 250, 55, and runs the football real well. He just got to slow his game down a little bit, believe it or not, so he can make more plays inside out. Second down and eight. And a counter option. Great block, but it doesn't matter. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Robert Taylor there again to make the stop. Thurman Lewis threw an outstanding block as he was cutting back. That's the thing, too, if you're defending this option, you better keep your head on a swivel because you, sometimes the play's coming one way and you got guys blocking back the other. Well, that's a tough block to make, though, from the outside. Thurman Lewis from the X receiver position coming back inside. He has to be careful to block above the waist and in front. He didn't block on Taylor that play, but he did get the defensive end who really wasn't aware of him and tell you, pretty much knocked him smack right on the ground. So third down and nine coming. They lost two on the play. Under three minutes to go in the first half. Sun will throw this one. Has a man open, complete. First down, down to the 41-yard line. Thurman Lewis, the man who just made the block, makes the catch. And Nichols trying to get rolling offensively. That's his 10th catch of the season, a gain of 19. Well-designed play. This is a good, excellent, a good job of offensive coordinator knowing he's got two deep zone coverage here. You see the two deep defenders. The void in the defense is right here, and that's where the receiver's going to get. Good job of throwing the football to the weak area of the defense. And Good job of the Lewis going up and grabbing and bringing it down. The first down, 10 from the 41. Again, the option, Philip Brock needs a block. Spins ahead to the 38-yard line. He had a blocker out there. It was Rudy August. He kind of ran right into the back of his own block. Well, a couple of times now, Rudy August, number 46, has been the lead blocker on the outside. And He's having a little trouble matching up outside. Here's August coming out here, number 46, and he needs to get into the chest and just get continue and take him on out there. And Philip Brock's got to find his way inside of him. He's been out of sync on that a couple of times. You either have to push him out, and the running back has to decide to go inside or out. He should clearly go yeah. inside here. August well, does a pretty good job of blocking. August was pushing outside. The problem was that Taylor. he cut it back inside. <laughs> there, was, there was big 54 waiting on the inside. Now Josh Sun down near the first down. I believe he's going to be short by a bit on second down. It's a pretty neat play by the offense. I like this. It's a quarterback follow. It's a trap from the outside. A good execution when it works for the Colonels. You're going to have one of the halfbacks block back inside, and then it's a fullback lead here in front. You're going to see Rudy August kick out of the linebacker, and Josh Sun just reads it up inside. Good job of execution that time by the Colonels. Nichols State will take a timeout. Josh Sun coming over, talking it over with the coordinators. There you see. Yeah, that's Jeff Richards. Left. It's Daryl Day. Jeff Richards there talking to his quarterback. And he was, came over from Jacksonville State. And this is his first year here. And, you know, taking a look at the offensive personnel that they have, they decided to go with this uh, triple option attack. And they had to go to school a little bit on it. They actually uh, clinicked with both Rice University and uh, an Air Force who both run the option attack. And what they do is they 
talk to those coaches, Kevin, and they and they find different little nuances that they do in their option attack offense, and and you implement those in your own system and try to find a way to work. And it's been real effective for this bunch because you know sometimes you just don't have the biggest guys, the strongest guys, and the fastest guys, so you use what you have. And this is a pretty good thing for an offensive attack to use is. Give, give the defense something they don't see all the time, and it's very difficult to prepare for. If you're going to get somebody to tutor you, that's a nice place to start with Ken Hatfield and Fisher to bury. Of course, Hatfield also coached at Air Force, but now the head coach at Rice University in Houston, athletic alumni from Nichols State. And check out guys in the pros right now, Daryl Pounds, Mark Carrier, of course, Gerald King in the NBA, or Gerard King, I should say, outstanding player here. Scott Sanders, the pitcher for the Tigers, Padres, and Cubs, Daryl Hamilton. That's Big play here, third down and one. Son has the first down and more down to the 25-yard line, knocked out of bounds there. That's a gutsy call, and one you better get to the outside or you're going to lose a few. Well, you sell it out inside. Everybody blocks inside and allows the quarterback to, hey, I'm going to take it around. It's just my foot speed against the defensive's foot speed, and they win. Watch everyone sell it out inside. You got the pressure here, and he gets around the corner. Good job that time by Son of, hey, selling it out. And, the defense use their aggressiveness, as I've talked about earlier today, and to your advantage, and they get around the corner. Stepped out at the 26-yard line. This is the time of the game, though. Nichols has been just absolutely outstanding. At the end of halves and at the end of the ball game, they've been able to put points on the board. And you're down to a minute 21 right now. Oh, a sideline warning comes from the near sidelinesman. They'll back him up. Number one on Nichols. Looked enthusiastic about hey, making that call, didn't it? Uh, both teams have had a sideline warning. Buddy Gingras is your referee. Now first down and 10 from the 26-yard line. Nichols wants to throw it. Instead, Josh Sun will go down. And he goes down in the arms of Andre Arnold. Now this is a guy who was backing up a transfer from Memphis. And how's this for transfers? You get a guy that led CUSA in sacks with 14 last year. Well, he's got three coming in on the season already this year for the, the Tiger defense. And hey, he knows how to get to the quarterback. And I'm sure that Doug Williams is happy to have him on his football team. Trying to throw back to the backside, but the defense takes that away. So quarterback has to make something else happen. He's trying to hand it off to his tackle. You're not supposed to do that. Now, Mark Hall. Wasn't able to go today. Mark Hall, a senior from Union Springs, Alabama. He's the leading sack man on this Grambling team. It's a nice depth to have if you can go on, you know, just call Andre Arnold's name. He had 14, as I said, for the Memphis Tigers a year ago before transferring here to Grambling. And now he is getting the start today. He, too, is a senior. He's from Columbus, Georgia. Oh, 67 seconds remaining here as Nickel State trying to score some points late. They lead it 12 to 10. Nichols scored all 12 of their points in the first quarter. Grambling has come with 10 in the second quarter. Grambling starting quarterback Bruce Eugene left after the first two possessions. And Randy Himes came back in, a guy who was 17 and one all time as he started. Let me see what the Colonels have done. 250 yards or more in three out of their last four games. They went for 295 on the ground alone against Sam Houston. Kevin, you talked about it earlier. They have the 10th hardest schedule in Division I AA football. That's a tremendous statement that this Nichols deep offensive and defensive units have had to go against this year. They throw it this time. Little hook and lateral. Lost the football. Torrance Duke going the other way. And Duke stepped out of bounds. Back at the 46-yard line, a 39-yard return, but check and see where they will mark him out. It's 55 seconds remaining in the half, and a player down right now, Philip Brock. He got leveled, and he is down at the 38-yard line, but let's check this one out. And that's kind of a cutesy play here by the offense as they would take a look at Philip Brock, who was coming around on the pitch play. He never got control of it. Here's Philip Brock here. It's going to be a misdirection and come back around. They're going to try to pitch it to him as I clear this screen off. And good job by the defense of picking it up on the outside and running. Duke, he steps out of bounds. And here's your quarterback, Josh Sun, number five. Hey, you know, you're the last man down there. you got to do something. Pretty good job there getting out in front. And he's causing a traffic jam as they see. Philip Rock's going to be helped off the field here. Well, Terrence Duke with a big return. He brought it back out 
Now mark it at the 46 yard line. And that's probably pretty close Kevin because he was right down that sideline as he stepped out and the side judge there called it probably correctly. Two time swag defensive player of the week. Terrence Duke senior from Lithonia Georgia. And this is a big blow here to the Colonels. Philip Brock is their number one rusher this year uh, from the halfback position done a good job for him and it's like he's getting hand carried off the field here at least helped off the field and doesn't look very very stable with his, with his leg. Well, it was futile early on but it's been outstanding as of late for Grambling at 10 points in their last three possessions. Hines will throw this one complete over the middle. 45 yard line be short of the first down. Tremont Douglas made the catch. His second catch of the day, 11th reception of the season. They'll go hurry up. Now, now Nick Nickel State is playing a zone soft defense here and it's going to allow the Tigers to get into the little void areas and make receptions if that's what they want to do. And they'll do it again. Douglas' is second straight catch. This is enough for the first down. And yeah, I know you're worried at this point if you're Nickel State about giving up a big play, but at the same time, you just can't give everything up underneath because you got a guy, a field goal kicker here for Grambling that can boom it. We've already seen him kick a 48 yarder today. Well, he's got a leg. I saw him kick one in warm ups at 55, 56 yards. No problem. He'll actually have the wind at his back if we do go for a field, if he does go for a field goal attempt here, Kevin. Wind blowing across the field from left to right as we look at it. And Randy Himes coming over to talk to Doug Williams and company about what they're going to do on this next offensive say, set. They've got uh, two timeouts left. They've got plenty of time to operate here. They can throw the ball down the field if they choose to or into the middle of the field. They've got the timeouts that they should use. And, you know, I like to talk about the defense of Nichols State. If they just lay back, they're going to get some give, give some holes here and that the Tigers are going to find ways to make receptions. And Randy Himes, a senior quarterback, like you talked about earlier, 17-1, and one, a lot of experience out there. He's brought these Tigers down the field many a times, and he'll find an open area. He's been able to do that, that's for sure. Grambling losing last week. It's only loss of the season. That was a 45-38 loss to Alabama State. And Randy Himes, talk about success, go with that 17-1 in his career. 7-0 this year. It was Bruce Eugene who got the start last week. And here we go on first down and 10. 26 seconds to work with. Ball on the 37-yard line. Bad snap. Himes feels it like a short stop. Throws this one into the end zone, and it's picked off. Lawan Walker out to the five-yard line. Check it. It's Chris Thompson who made the interception, his first of the season. He brings it back out to the five, and that is a big play for Nichols. It may preserve the lead here in the first half. You see Williams here. Excuse me, Thompson going to be in the backside here, just throwing the ball up, and Randy Himes lets it short. Good job there by the defense coming up and making the big play. He wants to pitch it here, but uh, smartly no. doesn't. Randy Himes got plenty of, got a bad snap. He's just going to have to get it underneath him and get set. And he does a good job of that, but the ball just didn't fly as well as he needed it to. And he had Highshaw back in the end zone. Looked like he was behind the defense, but the ball just fell short. So 17 seconds remaining. It's his second interception of the season. Josh Sun will take a knee and He'll take his team into halftime with a one point or wait a two point lead, 12 to 10. And Grambling's going to take a timeout over here, Kevin. Well, they did. They called timeout. And we have seven ticks left on the clock. Uh, you can see it here. It's kind of bright outside. It's hard to see the scoreboard. They're not going to really gain a whole lot here. Doug Williams and Kathy, they've got it's only a second down. They'll be able to snap it and go down and put, go down on the knee again and actually do the same thing on third down to burn the clock. Not a whole lot of advantage. I guess their thinking is there may be a mishandled snap and just get a lucky play, but realistically, the Colonel should be able to take this one in with a with an easy 12 to 10 uh, lead at the half. You know, you can really see, though, Doug Williams is a real teacher as far as he always constantly you know, showing people something and talking it over with whether it's coaches, players, and 
Sometimes having something to say to the managers. He's well, a 1978 first round draft pick of the Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay. Buccaneer, Buccaneers and chose to go to the United States Football League and play quarterback there and got back into the NFL and I had a chance to play against him. He's a real competitive quarterback and a guy who coaches real well. He's been around the game a lot and very well respected with Grambling. MVP of Super Bowl 22 in 1988. Doug Williams' ball club right now though on the short end. They trail it by a score of 12 to 10. Nickel State got off to a 12 nothing lead. They're making it hold up. They lead it by two. 100 of St. Augustine entertaining here at halftime is the Nickel State Colonels, the home team leading it by a score of 12 to 10. Town fans always get a little special interest at halftime. It is 12 to 10. Nickel State on top scored 12 points in the first quarter. Trying to make it hold up as Grambling comes back with 10 of their own in the second. We're at halftime here in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Gidry Stadium to be exact on the campus of Nichols State. And right now, let's take a look at what else is going on in the Southland Conference. Early on, now trying to hold on as they lead it at halftime over Grambling, 12 to 10. Let's get to Intimido, Louisiana. First half stats brought to you by Delta Airlines. And take a look at them, the rushing yards, as you would expect, Nichols State getting it done on the ground and Grambling doing it through the air. There's no doubt about it. Nichols has run the ball well early in the ball game. They've done a good job of it. But the turnovers here for Grambling are really the key for them. They haven't been able to capitalize on anything in the, in the first half with uh, giving up three turnovers and Nichols State obviously giving up the one. But uh, the average drive start, though, is important. These two teams, poor field position early for Grambling and Nichols State taking advantage of what they've had. Well, Doug Williams, though, has to be much happier with the way his quarterbacks have played or Randy Himes has played, particularly after a slow start for Bruce Eugene. And, man, he had a quick trigger on that. We thought he was going to stay and go ahead and let the freshman make a few mistakes, but not going to be the case. Well, when you come in here ranked ninth in the, in the country and you get down you know, 12 points real quick, he decided, hey, I need to do something to spark this football team. He put Randy Himes back in there at the helm and turned out to be a good decision. Look at this. I, could, I would pay to hear this conversation right here. Daryl Day is quite a character. I tell you, he's always got a smile on his face. He's well loved down here at Nichols, and you, he's a real inspiration to these young men on this football team. We hit Lawan Walker right in the face mask, picks it up. Out across the 20 to the 22 yard line. We were talking about Daryl Day and some of the things he will do to try to fire his football team up. And there's a local eating establishment here in town called Bubba's. Well, Bubba's is known for, among other things, having a lot of football helmets from all over the country. Uh, before, the Steel, before the Southwest Texas game a couple of weeks ago, he borrowed a helmet from Bubba's and went head to head with some of his defensive players. Well, he found a helmet that would fit. And what he did was he said, he wanted to put this helmet on and go out there and get in a defensive huddle. And the well, next thing you knew, he started banging heads with guys. And he did it two weeks in a row. So he had a Southwest Texas helmet, had a Stephen F. Austin helmet. and. Went out there banging, he's just he's telling me before the game, he's, you know, my neck is still a little bit sore. He had cuts he's, over his eyes, ears. Yeah, he said he found a grambling uh, helmet this week, but uh, luckily it didn't fit, so he couldn't put it on. That's just kind of something uh, that he does as, a, as an inspirational way to get out there. And the kids really enjoyed it. He enjoyed it, and you know, he didn't put the rest of the, the regalia on, the pads and everything, but he just put the helmet on and went out there and knocked it around a little bit. And that was Bubba you saw a moment ago, and if you can't have fun at, at Bubba's place, then just not trying so they'll kick this one over again they'll move it back to the 30 yard line Nichols come away with some good field position here they had it with the 21 but the offsides penalty will bring it back a pooch kick from the 30 yard line wow spun off and out to the 40 yard line and that was a shot 
It's Troy Stackhouse who was able to bring that one back, and Corey Baker delivered the blow. Well, Corey laid it into it, but he just didn't wrap up. Pretty good hit, but good job of spinning out by Stackhouse and getting some more yards. Boy, this is a way you cover kicks, and watch the watch the explosion here. You know, a guy, a guy that's not used to holding on to the football like Stackhouse, that's the kind of guy that'll drop it on a hit like that. And that's why hold on to it. And that's why you do the pooch kick too. You kick it to the guys who aren't used to catching the football, and sometimes you get a good play. But Nichols actually gets good field position here at the 40-yard line. And picked up 19 on that penalty. Colt Coletti right up the middle, out near midfield, out to the 48-yard line, gets good first down yardage. A pickup of eight. A second down and two is coming. Antoine Lawrence made the stop. We well, see the three defensive linemen there in a jump around stunt by the nose tackle. He goes the wrong way and guesses and. You can't do that against this bunch. You have to be able to play real discipline. Otherwise, the fullback's going to take it inside every single time. The quarterback reads it very well and gives it to Coletti. Mark him off at a gain of seven. As you see, the damage Coletti has been able to do to go along with that two touchdowns, 44 yards on eight carries. This time, the up man's not going to have any doing because Grambling sniffed that one out from the very beginning. Willie Gray. The junior transfer out of LSU been hampered with a separated shoulder, but no problems right there. Yeah, he missed three games early in the season. He's an all swack performer coming in. Big guy inside, just eating Coletti up, gets inside of the black, the, the trap block on the backside, does a nice job. Well, he back it up a couple. Be a third down and six. He lost three on the play. He's got some stuff written on there to remind him. So I got to go in there and get in the backfield. Big Willie's got some stuff reminders on his tape. Son from the gun. Throws it over the middle. Picked off at the 35-yard line out to the 40. And the 42-yard line, it's Denmark Reed, his sixth interception of the season. Four of those came in one ball game. Jackson State, he had four interceptions in that football game, the sixth on the year, as you said, Kevin. This ball just sailed on Josh Sun. He's going to try to throw it down to this zone. And, and Reed, if it is safety spots, is going to come back on top of the football. And, Good job there being where he's supposed to be. The ball is overthrown and just got shows he's got pretty good hands as a safety. They've got some outstanding defensive backs at Grambling. You know, with guys like Chris Brown and Calvin Pearson, Denmark Reed who made that one. Calvin Spears. Spears a three-time all swack player. Chris Brown's six in the nation in interceptions with seven, and that's the fifth for Denmark Reed. Make it the sixth for Denmark Reed. And back at quarterback is Himes. They don't go back with Eugene. Stay with Himes, the senior quarterback. Throws this one complete. Pickup of nine yards. That time it was Chris Highshaw who made the high traffic catch. He's short of the first down, but close. It's Torian Thomas, the strong side linebacker, made the stop. Good to see Highshaw catch the football. Doug uh, Williams told me he's, he's got great athletic ability. Speedster guy can run real well, good good route runner, but he's had trouble catching the football. And that time in traffic, knew he had to, he was going to get a hit and held on to it for a pretty good grab. Gain of eight, second down and two. Handed off to Kendrick Shankle. This is something I haven't done much of. The times came in and coming up and making the play down at the 49-yard line is Robert Patterson, a backup free safety, just a freshman out of Monroe, Louisiana. Good job of stringing it out inside. Nowhere to go inside for the running back, and Robert Patterson does. Comes up from the outside and makes a nice play. Good job here in getting Kinshaw and Bingo right there on the outside. Take the legs right out from under him. I want to say they've only thrown a couple of times. Do you see the hole in the oh, background? Yeah, they're, they're little, little jersey. jersey back there, no doubt about it. Again, the straight drop. They throw this one. Caught Levi Washington. Made the grab in traffic. And he's down to the 35-yard line. He lost the football at the end of the play, but he's marked down. And Torian Thomas there to make the stop. But a big gainer again for Grambling. And this drive will continue. And Levi Washington does a good job of going up against pressure from David Willis, number 10. You're going to see on the right side of your screen, number 10, Willis, who tries to make the play. He's actually bouncing off. And Washington picks up a good grab there. The quarterback throws it nicely to the outside where he can catch it. Allows the Tigers to get a good first down. Gain of 16 yards down to the 36. Opening possession. Second half for the Grambling Tigers. Ranked ninth in the country. They come here to Thibodeau, Louisiana. 
A 7-1 football team. They hand it off to Hill. Hill muscling his way down to the 30-yard line for Brad Hill. He's playing very close to home. That Tiger spirit is working right now. From Napoleonville, Louisiana, about mm -hmm. 20 miles down the road. Brad Hill's the leading rusher in the SWAC conference. He comes in here with over 800 yards on the season. He started the year with five straight 100-yard games. He's got 794 yards rushing coming in. Comes out to an average of right at 99 yards per game. He's tailed off in the last three. Quick look to throw. Levi Washington never turned around to look to the football. Big part of that was the pass rush because Himes couldn't just stand back there and let the play develop. Hey, Randy Himes, though, he sees the void in the defense right there. He's waiting for Washington to get there. He throws it up right back there, but the ball sails and the receiver never looks back for it, as you said, Kevin. But that's exactly where he needed to throw the ball. The quarterback smartly threw it to the spot, but the receiver has to go get it. Third down and four for Grambling. On the 30-yard line. Throw this one to Washington complete. Wrapped up immediately and short of the first down. Chris Thompson, sophomore from New Orleans, with an outstanding play in the flat. What he did was a good job of playing cover two, two hard corner on the outside, and Thompson just jams the outside receiver, and he plays short. He comes off and makes it play right away. Good pursuit inside, but he does a nice job of rerouting the receiver going up the field and comes off to make a, a play in sh stopping the Tiger short of the first down. Well, the freshman hit a 47-yarder, Brian Morgan. This one from 46 yards out. And he couldn't have split him any better, and he does. More importantly, Grambling goes on top in the ball game. It's first lead of the game for the Tigers. 13 to 12, a new score and a new leader in Thibodeau. Defense picks it off and the Tigers, their offense, moves the ball down the field nicely and puts three points on the board to take the lead. Grambling kicking game has struggled in the last few years and this uh, a big addition to this team. Now he made a 35-yard extra point attempt with no time left on the clock to win a game early in this season. Walker has had a lot of trouble. He may have to bring this one out, and he does. We found a seam for a moment, but it closed, and he gets out to the 15-yard line, and Nickel State is going to start 85 yards away after the 11-yard return. Technically, he does not have to run he this did. out, Kevin. The ball is called the impetus of the football. If it goes into the end zone without him making a clean catch on it, he can stop right there. But he just pulls it out and takes it out, tries to get what he can. Lawan Walker, we've seen him run very hard in the punt return game and also in the kickoff return. Game is an exceptional athlete back there, but good coverage that time by Graham. Now, you know, I don't think Lawan Walker was thinking about the impetus of the ball <laughs> at that time. I think he was thinking about who was, who was coming in the white jerseys towards him. Yeah, there's a lot of heat coming down on there for sure. <laughs> you think about things like that up here. Son on the option, finds Philip Brock. He's got the court, and he could go. Nobody's going to catch Philip Brock. 85 yards. He's down there. He's got a strain. He's got a cramp, I think. Philip Brock does a nice job of running the outside and just outrunning the defense, just stretching down there. Watch the pitch here by Son, number five. He takes it to the very last second. Bingo, outside the defense, and Philip Brock turns it on. Good block. You see the cornerback on the ground. Good job by one of the wide receivers getting out there. I didn't see who made the block, but Philip Brock taking it to the house, showing the speed that he has, just outrunning the entire Grambling Tiger defense. The first time today, they really got in the corner. They won the corner. You see he's being attended to. Now they call it official's timeout. Yeah, I'm sure it's just a cramp in his hamstring. I, hey, when you run that fast, and you got the speed to run that fast, it's with the guys who cramp up, but us slow guys, we never never used to get that. Say, I never, there's nothing I ever had to worry about. <laughs> hey, 86-yard touchdown run is second of the season. That's, that's pretty impressive. And more importantly, 
all the momentum had pretty much gone over to the guys in the white jerseys, and now one play, and you get it right back for a very young football team. Well, remember late in the second quarter what happened to Phillip Brock on the pitch, on the reverse pitch they had to him, and he gets smacked and comes out of the game, actually had to help him off the field, but hey, this is a big answer for this young man to come back and run like he did. And, Hey, I think he's just tired more than anything, but it's a big, big play for the Colonels, and more importantly, a momentum swing in this football game and getting right back on top. They lead it by five, so you go for the two-point conversion. They're waiting for Philip Block to get off the, off the field here. He is on the near sideline now, but he's just taking his, his time getting back. And, that is the fullback. Sun stays right behind him. Ran into the back of an offensive lineman and no signal yet. I think he got in, but uh, I think he did too. Yeah, he did. He definitely got in. He spun off his offensive guard who was coming around on the trap play. The two-point conversion is good to make it a seven-point game. So Gramley took the lead. Then Nichols comes right back. An 86-yard scamper by Philip Brock. Nick a nice answer back for Daryl Day's ball club. Well, this one goes absolutely nowhere back to the 10 yard line and Nichols State maybe momentum starting to put on a red jersey that time as Jason Arrington is who brought that one back and Travis Douglas was there to make the stop a return of eight yards and I think you know big Jason's probably going to hear when he gets back over to the sideline that you're supposed to go the other way he's going the wrong way big Jason he's 6'1 240 pounds a fullback tight end and I don't know if he's got the speed to take it across the field. <laughs> Didn't look like it. He's happy about that. He looked more like a just a, just a judge. He, he, he appears to be more of a north and south guy. <laughs> yeah, but he's got one on the books though. Of a kickoff return for uh, minus two yards. Minus eight actually. Yeah, actually minus eight. eight. Okay. Don't sell him short. And this one off the hill, right up the middle, and Hill taking tacklers with him out to the 25-yard line. That's the first time he has really been able to get off today. He picks up a gain of 14 yards. Now that's a north and south run right there. Brad Hill takes it right inside the heart of the Nickel State defense and gets some good positive yards and good gain here on first down coming out of their deep end zone and good blocking up front the offensive line. Matavian, right guard, Terry Roddy doing a good job of opening a hole for the big tailback. Out to the 25-yard line. Most of those 23 coming on that carry right there. And a nice job containing him so far, just like that. Well, Philip Brock, after that 86-yard touchdown run, still being attended to, whether he cramped up or strained a hamstring. You see 10 rushes, 118, and 86 of those coming on one fly. He's just going to have cramps. I would expect he'd be back in his football game. They need, they need him back there. Good production out of out of him is at the running back position. Second down and the 11 actually lost a yard, about a half yard in that last play. But tough going for Brad Hill. Lead rusher in the SWAC, as you said. Throw this one complete. Far side, first down and more out near the 40 yard line. Goes Chris Highshaw, a guy that they had talked about maybe had trouble holding on to the football. No troubles today. That's a pickup of 13 yards. Well, just a little stop route. Chris Highshaw is going to come out here and turn back to the quarterback and watch what he does after the catch. That's what's impressive. He turns upfield right away, runs away from the cornerback, and gets the first down. An easy short throw and catch from the quarterback to the receiver, and Highshaw nicely turns it back inside and gets positive yards. Pump fake, looking for a deep ball. He'll throw it deep. Highshaw down there, but knocked away at the last second by Chris Thompson. That one, hey, Himes had so much time that I think the out receivers just pretty much outran the football that time. Well, a smart play here by Chris Thompson. He actually baits Himes into throwing this football. Himes is going to come around here. You see Thompson at the top. He's going to have coverage on the backside. Watch him laying back there. Say, hey, let go ahead and let the receiver run behind me. I know it's a long way to throw the football. I'm just baiting him into throwing it, and he throws it short. He should have made an interception on that play. Instead, it's a second down and 10. That's a long way to throw a football. Yeah, but a great <laughs> he, he set him up for it. He really did. He wanted him to throw that football. He played him, played a little bait 
short there. He said, I'm going to let Hyshaw get behind me, and I don't think uh, Randy Hines can throw it over the top. Word on Philip Brock is it is just cramps. He should be back. They throw this one underneath, complete to Hill. Well, shakes off one man at the line of scrimmage with Brad Hill, his third reception of the season. Michael Griffin made the tackle for Nichols State. A big third down coming up here. Nichols trying to keep, well, keep the momentum on their side right now. James Miller, the linebacker, number 56, gets enough of Hill to slow him down until the cavalry comes for the, the rest of the Colonels. And good job that time by the defense of just continuing to the football. And that's that's the asset of the Colonels defense. They're not that big, they're not that strong, not very physical, but to be quite honest with you, they're a great pursuit team and they run the football real well. That's a big reflection of the head coach. He wants a swarming defense. Damn, been very good on third down. Himes trying to make it even better and does. Caught by Douglas, Tremon Douglas down near the 35 yard line. Big gainer there. I think there's a mental error here on the defense. It's man coverage on the outside and I don't know how you leave Douglas wide open. He's going to come to the middle of the field, get behind the umpire right back in here. And hey, this is a nice, easy throw right in the middle of the field. Nobody there. No one covered him. And he just he was up a nice first down. <laughs> he was surprised he had so much running in. Yeah, just a little middle error by the defense, but a uh, big play for the Tigers. Gain of 23 on third down. Drive rolls. And now penalty marker comes in from the near side. And again, I think this is the same. What they called encroachment before. We'll see what they call it this time. Encroachment on the offense. Five yards, first down. It's on. It was on Chris Highshaw because Chris Highshaw was livid with the official. In fact, the receiver came over to him and basically told him, we "Get an explanation on this." Well, maybe he's coming across the line of scrimmage, which is right here, and down here at the bottom of the screen is number 83 Highshaw. And if he's taunting or going over to the uh, in front of the cornerback, and they might be calling a penalty on him. This one is complete. What a play by the quarterback, Randy Himes. That was a terrible snap and was able to get it away to Kendrick Shanklin. He made this play. Oh, this was jailbreak all the way here. There's no really blocking up front. And Look at this. Himes take, grabs him out of the air and smartly gets rid of the football because he's under duress. And the throw and the catch is superb. What poise. Poise and smarts because he was able to find the hot receiver too and didn't have a whole lot of time to look for it. When is a gain of eight? And it goes so second down and seven. See the numbers on Randy Hines. 91 yards. Has thrown the interception. Bad snap. Complete to Levi Washington. Has the first down out of bounds at the 24 yard line. A lot of weapons on this Grambling team. Torian Thomas escorted him out of bounds, but not before he was able to pick up enough yardage for the first. Well, Randy Himes has saved his center here, Matavia, several times today. High snaps, low snaps, the ball's coming back. So if you're going to run the shotgun, you can't dribble it back to your quarterback and expect him to be a shortstop all the time and picking it up. Matavia, the senior center, who anchors that offensive line, is doing a pretty good job. He's a preseason black college All-American, but uh, just having a couple snaps. Not go where he wants you to do. He was a shortstop on that play, and he was a center fielder on the play <laughs> before that. Here comes the blitz again. Got rid of it. Incomplete. That's a great call because getting a pass interference against Gareth DeBetta. He definitely had a hand on the receiver, but I am thoroughly impressed with Randy Himes. There was pressure coming from the weak side again. Michael Griffin was in his face, and he had to throw that ball 25 yards in the air with a man hanging off of it. Uh, Randy Himes just rolled away from the pressure because it's no block into the backside. It's a free release, and he has to get rid of the football and got his receiver continuing down the field, and he's going to throw it down there and get a pass interference play at the end. On the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. And DeBetta's down here in coverage, and he's going to come down the field and he's going to get uh, inside. It's just going to be the poster route, actually, the flag route out here. And, Get underneath there, and hmm, I don't really see a penalty there. I don't know what he's calling. He had his. He, it, Did you see the jersey I, earlier? Yeah. It might have been, might have been pointing. You couldn't see any contact. And if, if anything, it could have been. If they had an argument, they could have asked for a holding because if anything, he kept him from getting to the football by holding on to the jersey. 
But it is a pass interference, 15-yard penalty, and now they go to Brad Hill, and Brad Hill right up the middle, and much like all afternoon, he's been contained most of the day, and second down and goal is coming up as the ball just outside the six-yard line. Well, I tell you, that's one way you want to play this nickel, excuse me, this grambling offense. Go ahead and make them be one-dimensional. They've really taken away the running game. Brad Hill has not really gotten on track, and they're trying to figure out a way to find the right hole. He's not running in there very well, and a little wall here. This defense doing a good job stopping it up, and Take away Brad Hill, you're going to make this team one-dimensional, and that might, might be the way to beat them. Call it officially. Second down and goal from the eight. Throws this one incomplete off the chest of Highshaw. That's a tough little in, and he should have made the catch, but still on that, that quick end right there, you're dealing with a 90-mile-an-hour fastball as well. Chris Thompson on the outside, the cornerback, actually does a nice job. He gets his left hand in there on the play. Randy Hines is reading, knows he's going to have the quick slant come in from the outside. He's going to deliver it, but Thompson, number 23, is right behind him. And oof, that ball's coming. Wow. Best, you know, sometimes your, your best, uh, at least it's a warm afternoon. Your, your best chance to catch that is let it get caught in your face mask and just run into the end zone. Well, I've seen four or five balls today that have bounced off the, the grambling receivers and almost be picked off by the defensive. Nickel State. And Graham is going to take a timeout and talk this one over. So a timeout on the field. We'll take it with them. Big third down and goal for Grambling as they try to tie this football game up. We're back with more in just a moment. 20 to 13 with 527 to go in the third quarter, but Grambling driving and they face a third down and goal from the eight yard line. Well, you've got tall receivers for Grambling on the outside with Highshaw and on one side and Ellis Spears on the other. Wouldn't be surprised if they're going to try to throw it these cornerbacks short, maybe do a jump ball situation. Three wide receivers. Don't forget about the tight end, John Petty. They haven't thrown to him all day. And they won't throw it here. Himes rolls out wide open. Washington touchdown. Hey, what? Randy Himes almost nonchalanted that one a little bit too much. Well, he sure made it look easy. Randy Himes on the play action pass just rolls out, and, and Washington, the little flag gets away from the defense. Hey, just real easy here, and then you're going to see Washington come up into your screen, and Randy yeah, Himes just that lay is. it out into the Take it. To his pocket. <laughs> Bingo. As easy a touchdown as you're going to see. And now the point after for a tie ball game. That went right into the living room, and we've got a tie game. Nichols and Grambling tied at 20 with 5.21 to go here in the third quarter. Nichols State, the underdog in this one. They have hung tough, but Grambling throwing a couple of knockout punches themselves. Nichols is able to come back, and now Grambling comes right back as both teams answering here in the third quarter. You know, last week... <laughs> Randy Himes goes in for the ball game against Alabama State and has eight receptions for 139 yeah, like yards. That. And now today he starts a game at the X receiver for the Tigers. And lo and behold, you know, in the third series of the football game, he's now back in there at the at the helm. And he just makes this all look too easy. Sells out the play action fake inside, and the defense is all collapsed inside. And easy throw outside and good separation by Washington on the defense. And hey, that's you know about 10, 15 yards to work. Either way, he could have easily ran that in, but. He said, no, I'll give uh, Washington the score on that. He's a senior from Hitchcock, Texas, which is down in the Houston area, south of Houston, and actually around Galveston. And he has been outstanding in this game. Again, 17-1 as a starting quarterback. Didn't start last week. They went with Bruce Eugene. That was the first loss of the season for Grambling, but did play at that X receiver. Was outstanding there. Earlier yeah. today, Bruce Eugene struggled early on, and they go right back to Himes. Yeah, on that drive, five different receivers. Yep. That, that's impressive. He moves the ball around, and talking to Doug Williams about him before the game, he said, you know, I, I was asking him, he does he feel bad about not playing quarterback and being an X receiver? He says, heck no. He says, that guy, he says he'll play anywhere on the football field. Probably his more natural position is at wide receiver, but I tell you, they just need him at quarterback right now. He's done a great job today. A six foot four, 200. Speed speaks for itself. He's one of those guys that... I don't know exactly what a 40 time would be, but man, he looks just a whole lot faster than everyone else out there. 
Walker again. He's trying to get to the outside. Cuts it back up to the 24-yard line, and Nichols will have first down and 10 from there. 24-yard return. Take a look at what Himes has done. Randy Himes is throwing the ball to Washington around the field, and he's got him down for a score on that play as well, and scoring one here early in the football game, diving over, and then yeah. playing the center fielders. You talked about Kevin being athletic enough to get the ball outside with pressure on his backside. Hey, and then the little bootleg here makes it look so easy, and then the big score here to go ahead in this football game. Nichols, the last time had the ball, went for 86 yards on one play. A little misdirection here. It's Travis Felder, sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, with his first carry of the game. Denmark Reed is there to make the stop as we count down under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Gain of a couple, called a gain of four, second down and six to come. Now Jeff Richards, the offense coordinator for Nichols, has to find some plays to get his offense back into the flow of the game. Go ahead and drive the football if you can. That's what this offense is capable of doing with this uh, triple option attack. Take it inside, take it outside. Philip Brock, you saw him leave after the 86-yard run a moment ago. Here, Josh Sun will cut it up. And Sun, plenty enough for the first down out near the 40-yard line. He's not back, obviously, on this series. They said he had cramps and was planning on returning, but not at least now. 11-yard game, Terrence Duke with the tackle. And Josh Sun rushes for average about 80 yards a football game, Kevin. Here's just the lead option here. you got the fullback blocking out front, able to pitch. Good job of turning it up inside. They had cut off the linebacker pursuit inside. Good execution by the Colonels. Oh, from the 39-yard line now, as Josh Sun finally went down there. Counted for 14 touchdowns in the last five games. Blow this one dead and mark it off five yards against Nickel State. A false start. On the offense, five yards, first down. Back it back to the 34 yard line. Josh Sun, sophomore from Baton Rouge. 78% of this squad, either freshmen or sophomores. A couple weeks back against Northwestern State, had to leave the game with a concussion. So they're glad to have him back in the football game and playing pretty well today. He runs this offense. When he's out there, he's a difference maker, and that's what they like with him at the quarterback spot. All 21 of Nicholas State's touchdowns this season have been scored by either freshmen or sophomores. That includes the three today. Josh Sun hogtied there near the original line of scrimmage. And second down and long is coming up. And Robert Taylor, the middle linebacker, and he's met Josh Sun quite a few times today on the outside. And He's learning how to run from the middle of the field. He's just tracking that quarterback down. And sometimes they block him and sometimes they don't. As we take a look at the, the numbers put up here by the underclassmen for the Colonels this year. That's coming into this one today. That means a bright future for Daryl Day's ball club. 1,500 yards rushing for those two classes. Again, they go from that wishbone set. Hand it to Felder. Felder spins out near the 43-yard line, but third down and long is coming up here for Nickel State. I say third down and long for a team that runs the ball. That would be considered a third down and long when you get over third and five. Felder does a nice job on the outside. Real quick guy, I tell you, reminds me of Lawan Davis, who's actually running pretty well himself on the kickoff returns. And his quickness inside her powerful under, you know, lower body. Look, you can just look at him, see that he runs powerful. Not very big, but doing a good job with speed and mobility on the outside. Big play here. Third down, six to go for the first down. Josh Sun from the gun. Throws it. Oh, should have been caught. Lewis dropped it. Would have been plenty for a first down inside Grambling territory. Should have had it inside the 40-yard line. Josh Sun delivered right where he needed to to his big receiver, the 6'2 senior receiver, needs to make that grab and move the chains. Josh Sun going to have enough protection up front here, not a problem. Throwing the football, he slides a little bit right in there, and he's got to make that grab. And again, fourth down, they have the offense on the field, and now they send the pinning unit on. Yeah, 
Hamlin brings the punt receiving team on. And now they go to the fake. It's not going to work. Big number 95, Andre Arnold, the defensive end, there to make the stop. And this is Grammy's going to get great field position. Well, this is probably a play that they, they plan to do is they switch them out. They switch their punt team out there. But earlier in the ballgame when they did, that Grambling did not run their defense off the field and come on with a punt team. They're thinking, now go ahead and change the punt team out. You might have an advantage and run the fake. Arnold sneaks through inside untouched and makes a good play in the backfield. It's Brian Thomas on the carry. Never really did materialize. So 2.13 to go with the first break, really, of the second half goes to Grambling. They have the first down and 10 from inside their 45-yard line, inside the Nichols 45, I should say. And now a timeout is taken by Grambling. There were some different personnel on the field that time. Byron Brown came in at running back. It's the first time we've seen them go to Brown today. Brad Hill and Kendrick Shanklin have been the running backs so far. And I'm wondering if he changed up the little personnel there. He's a little fired up. I'm going to tell you what Doug Williams wants is he wants execution from his offense right now. Uh, coming up after our game here on Fox Sports Net, the eighth-ranked Washington Huskies taking on Oregon State in the Pac-10 matchup. Then at six, Colorado travels to Ames, Iowa to face Iowa State in the Big 12. It's all coming up. College football Saturday here on Fox Sports Net. Along with Gary Reasons, Kevin Eschenfelder with you in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Good to have you for Southland Football League action. It's today the Southland Steps outside to take on the SWAC today as Grambling and Nickel State going head to head. And a good ball game tied at 20, two minutes, 13 seconds to go in the third quarter. Again, Byron Brown stays in. They run the reverse. This is why you had the change in personnel and all kind of room for Shanklin to the 20. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Torian Thomas finally ran him out of bounds after a gain of 31 yards. Well, Kevin, you called it. They set this up with personnel change. You see Shanklin going out in motion. Pitch it to Brown, who's going to hand back to Shanklin coming around. He's got his, hey, he's got his quarterback out there blocking for him. Randy Himes makes a nice block here. Take a look, cut block, gets him around the corner. Well executed play by the current, excuse me, by the Tigers. And hey, it's a big play here getting in inside the 20-yard line of of Nickel State. Call it the 16. Shanklin can fly, and he did with 2.02 to go in the third quarter. Tied at 20. Now they go back to Hill. Hill fighting his way down to the 11-yard line. Randall got the offense hitting on all cylinders right now. Philip Robin made the tackle for Nickel State. Now they'll face a second down. Picked up two on the play and second down and eight coming. Brad Hill started the season with five straight 100-yard games. Been tough sledding today. But he'll put his team back on top for the second time in this ballgame. They last led 13 to 12. We're at 20 to 20 right now. And that is what he has seen mo much of today. Just a matter on those short yardage plays like that of guys in the red jerseys winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they have. They've done a good job inside against the running game of Grambling. Hey, the thing that's going to they're setting up here again is that bootleg that play action pass or actually the rollout with Himes and they've run his play twice now. I wouldn't be surprised if they do that same play again. We saw for a score last time that Himes was down here in this territory. Shanklin is in at the tailback. Be along with Levi Washington. That's Washington in motion. They run the option. Shanklin. You think Shanklin was thinking about throwing that ball? Well, he looked like he wanted to get it set up to throw, but he was going to the short side of the field, and it wasn't the receiver down there on this side. The X receiver was High Shaw, and he didn't look like he was wanting the football. Take a look at the pitch. He's trying to get the ball into his hand like he wants to throw it, but the 
defensive pursuit gets there right on top of him pretty quick. Just for that split second, man, looked like he was going to turn it over and see about a halfback pass. But instead, they'll go for the field goal. For the second time today, Brian Morgan will try to put his ball club on top. Been rock solid today. Hitting from 46 and 47 yards. This one for 33 yards out. Not a problem. So a three for three from the field goal department for Brian Morgan today. And Grambling, plenty to cheer about right now as they lead a 23 to 20 over Nickel State. Nichols got the first 12 points of this ball game. But then Grambling came back with 10 of their own, 13 unanswered, I should say, to make it 13-12 lead. Since then, these two teams have gone back and forth, and now Grambling leading at 23 to 20 here in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Is that man right there, Doug Williams, looking for his eighth win of the season. These teams have won 69% of their games since he's taken over as the head coach at the end of the 1997 season. Look over for the living legend, Eddie Robinson. National championship last year, black national championship. And very, very pleased about his performance a year ago, and he wanted to continue that this year. He knows he has a lot of seniors, a lot of talent on his football team for Grambling, both on the offense and defensive side of the ball. Very athletic group, and they make a lot of spectacular plays. And they bring plenty of fan support. Huge crowd on hand here today. No question the biggest crowd of the season for Nichols State. How's that for some coaching? Talking it over with Levi Washington. And when a guy like that's talking to a young 18, 19 year old kid, they know he's been there before. At the highest level, you know that it has to hold a little bit of weight right there. Well, I asked Doug before the game, I said, how do you coach? And he said, I, I said, do you keep it loose out there? He says, that's the only way you can coach his bunch. He says, he has a lot of fun out there. He lets the kids have fun. And he says, they, they learn. They, te they teach a lot to these kids, and they, and they recept a lot of what he has to talk about. And, but he, ha he wants to keep it fun out there. He knows what these kids are all about, and he communicates with them very well, and, and that's the mark of success. He's been successful everywhere he's been. Player now as a coach. Now Josh Sun, the young sophomore, who tries to answer back with his offense as they come back out on the field, trailing by three, 23 to 20. Colt Coletti right up the middle, and Coletti out near the 30-yard line. Man, every time it seems like he gets the ball on first down, he picks up nine yards. Alexis Robinson made the tackle, the strong side linebacker, with good yardage on first. It'll bring up second down and short. Well, that option attack, you've got a lot of different ways to attack the defense, and the fullback inside is always your first option, and Colt Coletti's done a pretty good job of running that ball for him inside today, and he's missed a couple of games with an injury, and Glad to have him back inside. Glad he picks up nine on the final play of the third quarter. This one has gone back and forth in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Still got a lot of time before dinner time. We got a lot of football left to play. 15 minutes to be exact. Grambling leading it by three. I was trying to mount a charge right now as they trail Grambling 23 to 20. Just getting underway here. In the fourth quarter with Gary Reasons, Thank Kevin Eschen, probably glad to have you with us for Southland Football League action here on Fox Sports Net. Josh Sun, quarterback, sophomore from Baton Rouge, outstanding runner, facing a second down and one. We go from a full house wishbone set. Trying to keep it, gets the first down, and he pays for it as well. Robert Taylor, 54, in the white jersey, is playing impressive specimen. He has been something to watch throughout this game. Okay, he's just fighting off blocks. Watch him fight off number 60, Jeremy Smith, block him from back downhill and make a tackle on the quarterback. But to Josh Stone's credit, he's he's strong, he's tough, he turns it up inside, he takes a few licks, and that's what you have to do as an option quarterback. Picked up the first. 
from the 34-yard line. Again, they run the option. Cuts it back against the grain. Think about cutting it back against the grain. You can find a hole or you can really pay the price, and sometimes you do both. And you know, ever since Philip Brock went out, this has limited this Colonel offense a little bit. Went for 86 yards on the last time he touched the football. You can see he's in some pain right now. Yeah, it's a cramp situation. What happens is when you get in a cramp situation, you cannot replace the fluids in your body that quickly, and that's what's happening here. It takes time to get that back into his into his muscles so he's able to can, can get some fluid in there to get flexed out again. And it's just a painful thing until you get uh, hydrated again. He's not going to be able to go. Look at Nichols, 224 yards. They've gone for 250 or more in three of their last four games. Josh Sun may have lost one there. Calvin Pearson was there to make the stop along with Antoine Lawrence. It's not going to help the rushing average much. They move it ahead for a gain of one maybe, but a third down coming up and a big third down and five. You want to play smart here. You don't want to do anything that's going to give the Tigers a chance to get the football. Even if you have to go down on fourth down and punt the football and play the field position game, that's what you need to do right here. Well, Grambling won the field position when they were able to thwart off a fake punt. Now Son wants to throw it against the body. He throws it incomplete. It's a tough play for any quarterback, and particularly a guy who's noted for the option, and that one goes incomplete. And again, it is punt time. For Nickel State. Well, not number 95, Andre Arnold, the defensive end we talked about, who came here from Conference USA, the sack leader a year ago. Going to come up to the outside and is really going to pressure the quarterback in a lot of different ways. Here. He doesn't really have to cut him and block him and make him run around the corner. And, okay, he delivers well a strike there. It's a hard, high fastball that's not handled, but now the Colonel's going to have to punt it away. That was Isaiah Mitchell, who wasn't expected to play in this ball game with a pink eye. He wasn't able to hold on to it. Nine men on the line of scrimmage for Grambling. They get an offsides penalty coming up. Taken by Shanklin. Penalty markers are down. Shanklin with a nice return inside the 40-yard line, but let's come all the way back to the line of scrimmage and check the marker. Yeah, it's going to be an offsides, I'm sure, against the, the punt return team at Grambling. On the defense. That will negate a 42-yard return. And Doug Williams is over there. He said, I can't believe this. I can't. I've got a great return, good field position. They're going to take this play away from him. Yeah. But more importantly, it's going to bring up a fourth and about a half a foot here for the Colonels. And I think they may send their offense back on the field. Well, Doug Williams across the way is just absolutely livid. There was no hesitation. The line judge on the near side of the field where we are right in front of the Colonel's bench actually throws the flag. You're going to have encroachment by the defense. They're in the, they're in the neutral area, and Doug Williams didn't see it that way. Now the official. You know what Doug Williams is saying, because he's, he's made the gesture a couple of times, that there was a pump fake on the, the snap. The head bob, yeah. A lot of times the centers will do that. They'll, they'll raise their head and look down and look up and look back, and... And that'll draw the defense, the, the rush unit inside. We're about to mark off the penalty here. I still think it's going to be short yeah, of the gonna, first down. Yeah, just from the vantage point where we're at, Kevin, look, it might be about a foot short once they mark the, the penalty off. Fourth down. Fourth down and a foot. And they will punt. And we'll leave the defense on the field this time for Grambling. They don't change. <laughs> They're going to play it close here. They're not going to make any heavy thing go against them. They're ready for a fake, ready for anything. Leave your defense out there. James Wilcox will punt it away. It well, appears that he will punt it away. They got to snap the ball, and they did. 
And Wilcox in trouble back to the 15 yard line. That time Grambling jumped across the line of scrimmage. And the Nickel State players are pointing at them. The play can keep going on, and that's exactly what happened. Now flags come in from the backside, and what may have saved Nichols on this play may be a delay of game. Well, I don't know if it's a delay of game, but it's actually going to be a false start here on the offensive side here because the offensive tackle stands up. He's on the line of scrimmage. Once you get a two-point stance and you're set, you can't. It's much like a pass offensive lineman in the pass set, and he stands up. It should be a penalty now against Nichols. Definitely punt the ball away now. They're gonna be fortunate to punt the ball away. <laughs> yeah, fortunate. That's right. Now we've got a delay game. Okay, on the offense. Delay. Five yards. Fourth down. Yeah, yeah the, the play can go on if the defense jumps. What should have happened was the center should have snapped the ball when he was in the neutral zone. Of course, that's easy to see from up here. And you had two things. The back judge threw the flag. He was looking at the. Uh, He's actually looking at the play clock, and you've got this guy standing up right here, which is an off, which is a false start, and the line judge threw a penalty flag over there. Nonetheless, it's a five-yard penalty either way against the Colonels in a dead ball foul. A bad punt for Wilcox again. Yeah, 19-yarder earlier in the game. And this is going to give Grambling the football with a three-point lead and pretty good field position. State, the faithful trying to cheer their team on. Ball 23 to 20 here in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Full house at Gidry Stadium. Now we get a good football game here. Both teams have come out and make good plays and some not some good plays. And now it comes down here to the fourth quarter. He got 12 minutes to go in this football game and we'll see which time which team is going to answer. Randy Himes with three incompletions here in the second half. Being chased. And he threw this one away wisely. Again, what I've been most impressed with with Randy Himes is his decision making. Speed's not far off of it. Neither is the arm. Well, that's a play action pass and watch the heavy deliberate fake here and watch the depth that he gets. He's about 12 yards back there. Number 96, Philip Robbins going to chase him, going to come out of bounds and hit Randy Himes right there as he goes out of bounds and makes him slide into the Grambling bench and getting off off that play. I can see that Randy Himes wasn't real happy with that extracurricular activity. He says, I'm out of bounds. You throw a flag on him. Well, it goes an incomplete pass, second down and 10. On the Nichols 49-yard line. Himes guns this one complete. Complete on the far side to Ellis Spears. Spears went to the marker, came back nicely, and it should be enough for a first down. And Randy Hines does a good job of throwing the ball to a spot. And watch Spears come up the field and actually work back. He works back about six yards to get this football. Watch him. He stops at the 32-yard line, comes all the way back to the 38-yard line. Good job of working back to the quarterback so that you're able to pick up the football. The ball is thrown short and underneath, and good job by Spears coming back and making a good grab. First down. And they're not getting any pressure now on Randy Himes. He's throwing the ball uncontested. He's such a great athlete back there. He's able to just maneuver around and get space and do what he wants to throw on the football. I don't know if they got anybody on the defensive front that could catch him. Early in the game, Rivera was doing a good job of getting back there and pressuring Eugene early, and then also uh, Himes when he came in first, you know, the first part of the football game. But as of late, the Colonels have not had any good pass rush on the quarterback. At the same time, Grambling's throwing it about 80% of the time. Here they hand it off to Brad Hill right up the middle as he drags tacklers. Count it off at a gain of 13 yards down to the 25-yard line. But my point, I think the defensive line may be just tired right now of chasing Randy Himes all over the place. Yeah, they play a lot of people up there. We talked about earlier last week. They played 11 players on the defensive front. And they're getting a lot of them in there now. You see Robin, number 96, just grabbing on, trying to pull him down. And you know, the big tailback's doing a good job of running the football. Brad Hill is a, a hefty tailback, you know, 5'10", 230 pounds. And, and he's, he's a pretty good load. From the 26-yard line. Hill again. 
cuts back against the grain and goes for a gain of eight yards. He's fired up as Michael Griffin made the stop. He hasn't seen a whole lot of open running lanes today. As in the last two plays. Well, this is a stretch play, and he's going to try to go play side, but the defense over pursues, and he cuts back. Phillip Robbins, number 96, he goes across the nose of the of the offensive guard and the, becomes backside. Brad Hill does and picks up a nice gain inside. And Doug Williams is happy about his offensive running attack, and you need that to, to show up at some point in the ball game. It takes a lot of pressure off the passing game. This time, though, not much there. Second down and short. He'll maybe for a gain of one. The third down and one. And you got a chance here for the Colonels to stop the Tigers on the third and short and possibly force them to kick a field goal or attempt a field goal. That's what you want to do. You want to. Give your offense an opportunity to get back after the chance to stay in this ball game. If they give up a touchdown here, be down 10 points. It's not a situation you want to be in. Yeah, 10 rather than six. Big difference. Should be enough for the first down. Brad Hill, a guy that can just absolutely punish defenses. And maybe more importantly, when you know what you're going to get with Randy Himes, a guy that can throw it all over the yard, but you have to be balanced and you have to be multifaceted, and that's exactly what he gives Grambling, because if they need to get the ball in a situation where they need to take some time off the clock, he's the perfect guy to do that. And that's what's happening here. Brad Hill is running with authority, running with power inside between the tackles. Nothing fancy, just the offense against the defense, the offensive line for Grambling right now is opening a few holes, and Brad Hill's taking advantage of it. Number 15, Himes three-step drop, looking over the middle, caught at the five-yard line, and down there is Ellis Spears. And the Grambling receivers have made some big catches in a lot of traffic today. Well, that's a tough throw and a tough catch. You got Ellis Spears going to run the quick, quick slant pattern here, and you can see Himes delivered inside, and bingo right there, and then the forceful tackle over the top. And Seneca McMillan. Tough throw here, you know. This one is you don't want it to tip up in the air. It's one that can easily be tipped up and the defense come down where you get a big interception. You don't want to thwart your efforts here for Grambling that is trying to put points on the board. So second down and one on the six-yard line. First down, touchdown, Grambling. Brad Hill is 11th touchdown of the season, first of the day. More importantly, Grambling with a chance for a 10-point lead. They're a point after away. Well, the Colonels' defense is getting a little weary here, I think. Todd Rivera, number 40, just cannot make the tackle. Brad Hill showing his power as he's done here on this drive and taking it into the end zone. Brian Morgan for the point after. And he's good. So a new score in Thibodeau. The Tigers are rolling. The number nine team in the country with a 10-point lead. This time they use the legs of Brad Hill. 30 to 20 to score. 17 unanswered points, and they lead it 30 to 20 with 9.03 to go in the ball game as Doug Williams Ball Club looking for its eighth win of the season. And there's the man, the six-yard touchdown. And he had a big part to play on that one. They've scored on all four second-half possessions of the Grambling Tigers. He plays 49 yards. They take 331 off the clock. And Brad Hill, a big part of that. Big fullback, just tailback, rather, running and bruising inside there. That offensive line taking over on the uh, winning the battle up front, doing a good job moving the football. The Grambling Tigers have really taken control in the second half. Lawan Walker goes back deep. On the pooch kick. John Price will call for a fair catch and make it at the 30-yard line. And Nichols will have it. First and 10. They trail it by 10. Penalty marker down back at the line of scrimmage. Maybe for the second time in this ball game, Grambling is going to be off sides on a kickoff. Well, they're anxious to get down there and cover it and make a big play. Can't fault them for doing that, but they're going to have to kick it again. I think the Colonel's going to accept this penalty. And on the kickoff. Five yards, 
Re-kick. I see Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Richard. <laughs> Doug Williams. <laughs> Give me a break, right? He's thinking exactly what I'm thinking. Of course, if, if you were offsides and they didn't call it, you had one call back, they'd go back and look at it in the films and they'd say, look, he didn't even call this. <laughs> this kicker's had a good day, Morgan. Yes, he has. He's uh, been excellent through the uprights on all his kicks and then what he's been asked to do kicking off. And Freshman from Groves, Texas. Had a strong leg. Had a Got a good build for a kicker. He's got a good, strong, powerful lower body. 47, 46, and 33 yard field goals. Yay. Yeah. Another pooch kick. On the 30 yard line. They'll run this one back out. Out to the 35, and not a whole lot there. That's except for some big hitting. And David Plaisance is who ran that back. Return of four yards. So the Colonels will try to get it rolling on the offense, something that they have not been able to do, especially since Philip Brock went out. Brock had an 86-yard touchdown run early in the, or midway through the third quarter. And on the play, it appeared that he cramped, but he may have been more severe than that. He may have tweaked a hamstring or something because he has not come back into the ball game. Still continues to stretch here on the near sideline. Hand it to Coletti. Coletti after the 43 yard line. A guy named Colt Coletti. He could have played back in the 50s in the <laughs> NFL. Yeah, he's Colt got Coletti. He just sounds like. He's, and he's got that kind of mentality, too. He's got a tough, hey, I'm a football player. I'm going to do what it takes to win. Get my shoulders down here. Don't avoid contact. He's kind of a guy that rock him, sock him, plays tough. He's a guy named Colt Coletti could have played for the Giants in the 50s in Yankee Stadium or something like that. Hand it to Coletti again. Coletti out near the first down. Second effort, maybe third effort. Got the first down and more out near the 50-yard line. That is just pure determination. I'm telling you, Colt Coletti just should have been stopped for about a one-yard gain at best and short of the first down. But he, he's going to continue. He needs to get to the past the stripes here to get a first down and watch his effort come around and just carrying the defense of the Tigers. Say, hey, you need to bring more than one guy to get me there. First down and 10, ball out near midfield. Very, very important drive for Nickel State. They trail it by 10, 7.45 to go in the ball game, pitch it back. Out near the 45-yard line, or down near the 45-yard line for Rudy August. And Rudy August now getting some carries since Philip Brock is not an option anymore in this ball game. And he's at that halfback position, the trail back. Comes around for the pitch. Josh Sun brings it down the line of scrimmage and pitches it back to August. And he's been pretty much used as the blocking back throughout this entire ball game. The lead guy on the option is the first blocker out there. It's going to change now. Now they go no huddle. And under 7-10 to go in the ball game. Nichols needs points, need him fast. Here's Travis Felder and Felder. Hit, and he will lose a couple. An outstanding play by Calvin Spears. Three-time all-swack player. Yeah, it really is. He, he came up and made a nice play earlier in the ball game. This is a very similar one. Hey, nobody blocks him. I'm going to make the play. Here's Calvin. He's just going to come in here from his cornerback spot, number four, and do a good job. Nobody's going to block him, so, hey, I need to make the play. And he does. No problem there. Down the line here, you're going to see Feldman just turn it up inside. Josh Sun, a little heat on him, so he has to get rid of the football. And this one's going to lose a couple more. Did they, did they fumble the football? That's the question now. I didn't see a beanbag go in, but he went down in a hurry. Fourth down coming up. Mm. That was a big down there. They need to get something positive there, and they did the quarterback follow play, and Josh Sun didn't get what he wanted on it, and then he stopped there short. Actually lost a yard, I think, on it, Kevin. Surprised Nichols is going for this here. Now you see Philip Brock, the sophomore from New Orleans, brother Martin High School. He's going off. 
He doesn't look like he has a whole lot of energy. That that uh, doesn't look like he's even injured, but I think he is just that. Fourth down and six. Coletti, time to throw, does incomplete. Well, John Price was open, but he couldn't deliver the football. So Grambling will get it back on downs at the 48-yard line. Now, this is a play that they could have made. It was a zone coverage, too deep zone, and Daryl Day says, hey, that's one that got away from us. You want to get that outside receiver to settle down behind the cornerback in front of the safety and deliver it in there. Josh Sun just lets his ball sail him a little bit here. You see the safety on the near side over the top, and the, the hole is right back behind, and just sails, goes out of bounds. Well, Grambling gets it back, and... I think you may look for a little bit of Brad Hill. Matter of fact, a lot of bit of Brad Hill here. A big bruising fullback, a guy that can be your number one possession guy and take some time off the clock. And they hand it to him. Hill is a load, and that load doesn't stop until he gets first down and a gain of 11 yards. Down to the 40-yard line where James Miller finally made the stop for Nichols. Well, the big tackle here at number 63, Brandon James, wins the corner. Everything comes around, and Brad Hill does a nice job of bouncing to the outside. <laughs> what a tough guy to bring down. Move the sticks, though, first down and 10. With the time remaining, under five and a half minutes to go. It's grambling that far away from its eighth win of the season. Big hole for Hill down near the 25. Another gain of 11 yards. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains. And right now on running plays, on dive plays, safeties are making tackles. And that's not a good thing for the defense. You want to have somebody come up there, watch the offensive line, do a good job blocking outside. And Matavia comes over and seals off the linebacker. And hey, he's up on the secondary before you know it. Watch Matavia block out here on the linebacker, number 50, do a good job of getting Miller out of the way. And, Hey, Brad Hill, he's having a little fun now. Now they're going to work that clock as well. Under 10 on the play clock. They snap it at one. That's the way you do it. Brad Hill right up the middle. Down to the 26-yard line. Nichols now has you know, four minutes to go in this football game. Well, just over four minutes, Kevin. They've got three timeouts left, and, and the clock is not their friend. They've got to try to think, hey, we've got to stop these, these Tigers here on this series of downs and get the ball back, and the more ticks you have go off that clock. You might want to start using some timeouts in this situation. All right, real close to doing it. Second down and eight. down that time they handed it to Michael Young his first carry of the game but he averages five yards a carry he's a senior out of Shreveport and Michael Young on the misdirection slant counter gonna come to the left side and then back to the right and watch get behind his offensive guard and bump outside good game there almost a first down this is a very tired Nichols defense right now you see a lot of guys with their hands on their hips you know, really windy. Well, a week ago, Kevin, they, they played 11 people up on the defensive front. I haven't seen that much substitution this week. I think they made a decision to kind of go with some of their better people in there, the more experienced players. And they haven't been, haven't been rolling that defensive front in there as much today. So, the, you know, the playing time has taken a toll on them. This, this offensive line from Grambling is quite a bit larger than the, the defensive front for the Colonels. And they're using some big time off the clock right now. It's third down in inches. Times again, they snap this one under five. Boy, Rivera just absolutely leveled Michael Young, but it should be enough for a first down. They'll stop the clock, reset it, and move the sticks. That's another first down, no doubt about it. Look at what Grambling has been able to do here in the second half. Four possessions, four scores, two field goals, and two touchdowns. 
They lead it after trailing in this game 12 to nothing. Well, really, they have. And you know, they get, got off to a slow start. They had Bruce Eugene start in the football game at quarterback number 10. And Randy Himes came in to take a look at Bruce Eugene, just a freshman, started his first game a week ago. And now they're starting his, start, his second game. And Randy Himes came in. He's just a spark moving from his receiver position back to the quarterback position that he started seven games and seven wins early to start this season for the Tigers. Throw this one for the end zone. Incomplete. Now on this drive alone to go along with that, the four possessions in which they've scored, they've had six drives, six plays on this drive. Well, they've been reeling off yard after yard on this drive. Now they're down in the red zone again. Not surprising you're gonna throw the ball here, but uh, Himes throws it up, tries to get all of it here. Milk Millen is number four. Doing a pretty good job of staying with him. The ball has had it been thrown perfectly. Now the incomplete pass stops with the clock with two minutes, 44 seconds remaining. Now if you stop him here, you definitely have to call a timeout. There's no doubt about it. You need the, as much time on the clock as you can. Hand it to Young. Young to the 15-yard line. Both hands on the football. And it's a third down coming up. And now Nickel State will take... A timeout. So a timeout of the field taken by Nickel State. They trail by 10 for now and not a whole lot of time to come back. We'll be back with more in a moment. NFL. This Brad Hill is the man for the job. Running downhill. Look at the body lean that he has. And he's just powering through the Nickel State defense. Hey, this fourth quarter, he has taken a toll on him. The defense is tired and He's just taking advantage of it. The power of the big tailback and getting positive yardage and more importantly, running the clock for uh, the Tigers. Look at the difference. Second half has been a workhorse. 83 yards in the ball game, 74 of those coming in the second half. Now, Grambling is going to take a timeout after a Nichols timeout. That is interesting. Uh, Doug yeah. Williams and Randy Haas may have seen something out there he didn't want to go, and Doug probably said, hey, go out there, take a look at it, and we'll use a timeout if need be. Grambling obviously out of timeouts now. Nickel State got two remaining, and certainly they'll use one here if they do stop him. It'll bring up a fourth down situation. He talks it over. I want to remind you, coming up, number eight, Washington. Taking on Oregon State, a Pac-10 battle here on Fox Sports Net. Follow tonight at 6 o'clock. Make our way to the Big 12. Ames, Iowa is spot for it. Colorado Buffaloes taking on the Iowa State Cyclones in the Big 12 action talk coming up. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. That one should be interesting right there. Oregon State, at a, well, right out of the... Right off the bat, they, people had them as preseason number ones, preseason national champions. Got beat by Fresno State, and they just have not been the same football team since. And Nichols has fought the good fight today, but number 19 in the country. Looks like they're going to have their way wearing this team down as it would appear as the time went by. You know, interesting here how Dick Williams decided to start to... Uh, a young quarterback, Bruce Eugene, and now he's gone to Randy Himes. Do you think he's going to stay with Randy Himes the remainder of the season at the quarterback spot? I don't think there's any question. <laughs> Look at this. You know you're good when you can hold the ball in the air starting at the eight-yard line. That's how wide open that play was. Simple quarterback draw. Everybody's covered outside. The rush is outside. And just take it inside. Randy Himes is, is, is just a tremendous athlete. There's no doubt about it. He may not be your purest pocket quarterback, but I tell you, he's one of the most athletic quarterbacks I've seen back there. And being able to run the football, elude the rush, and, and do these kind of things, just take it into the house very easily. A short field to work with for Grambling as they took over after holding on a fourth down. And it may be the final nail in the coffin right here. As Grambling has come rambling back and they lead it 37 to 20. We'll wrap this one up in just a moment. Al has it. <laughs> the camera shot now? Yeah, once we came back, he had plenty to say before. Once we came back, he didn't have anything to say. 
Lay Sox out to the 40 yard line. Once upon a time and land a long, long time ago, Nickel State led this game 12 to nothing. Since then, Super Math will tell you it's been 37 to 8. A couple of things, Nickel State, they come out with the option attack, the triple option, and Grambling State, they have not seen an option attack this year, so it took them a couple of series to really get into a groove of how to defend it, and I think they've done a pretty good job. They had some had some plays that didn't play it so well. You remember the 86-yard touchdown run that Phillip had, against, Phillip had against him, and those kind of things are able to happen against a defense, and that's it's an option attack offense that you know, if you don't play it a lot, if you don't play it very often, you have a chance that it can it can jump up and bite you. Sun will throw this one downfield, out of bounds, including intended for John Price. Stops the clock, 2:18 to go. Nichols needs points and needs them in a hurry. Otherwise, Gramley will go to eight and one. Their only loss coming a week ago. And bounce back. They lost to Alabama State by 70, or by seven in a shootout, 45 to 38. This one incomplete. Again, looking for Price. A high and outside. And then almost intercepted by Chris Brown. Out of Josh Sons. Credit here. He's got seven players coming at him, and he's got to get rid of this football. They're coming pretty hot and heavy there, and takes a little pop after the throw. Bright future for this young man, though. Just a sophomore here for the Colonels, doing a good job running this offense, and he's only going to get better with time throwing the football. And the more experience he has seeing the passing lanes, I can see that Daryl Day is going to have a real bright future for this young man. I think it's a bright future for this program for Daryl Day. You know, both of these coaches have one thing in common when you talk about it. They talk about the things that they have improved on with this team. And don't think for a second that. Both of these coaches don't think first and foremost about the student athlete and that they talked about how the GPA has improved on both of these ball clubs dramatically, Grambling and Nichols State. Yeah. The Nichols here, they were down about a 1-7 before Darrell came in. Now they're up to 2.48, almost 2.5, which is their goal for their entire program. And a lot of guys graduating on both programs. And one of the things that is, these people lose sight of, these coaches are very, they care very much about these players and one of their first and foremost things is getting these guys the education they deserve and that's the reason they come to these universities. First down complete on the far side, John Price makes the catch. Well, still 2.02 to go. Nickel State may not have enough time to come back in this ball game, but at the same time, they do have enough time to at least have a positive finish. Of course, last week, Chicago Bears scored 14 points in about 30 seconds. Son again, going from a shotgun. Complete on the far side. Thurman Lewis makes a catch and steps out of bounds. Clock stops again. The ball at the 28-yard line as they'll move the sticks. Well, Grandma's just sitting back playing a two-deep zone coverage and playing what's called a hard corner, trying to jam the line of scrimmage and actually missed the jam on that one. Let the receiver get behind him and Doug's not too worried about his defense right now. He's got a 17-point lead here late in the ball game. He knew it'd be a tough go going coming down here to Nichols. It always is. Come in here and this this bunch always fights hard. Nichols State does. And anytime you come away with, with a win out of here, it's, it's a real plus. Flags down, and so is Josh Sun. Let's check the penalty marker. So Terrence Duke is going to get credit for the sack, but sort this one out. On the defense, five yards remains. First down. That didn't take long. The five yard penalty. Minute 52 left on the clock. Young Colonel fan. This is 
I was going to say, she's probably seen, she's seen better days than the Colonels have had, but then again, been around long enough, maybe. Program on the rise, though. Throws this one in the end zone. Price is open. Touchdown, Nickel State. Throws it on Chris Brown, number 19, the cornerback. Not a lot of people throw his way. He's such a good cover corner that a lot of people actually choose to go away from him. Josh Sun does a good job here throwing the ball deep in the back of the, back of the end zone. And Price just gets a step on him here. I don't know if he tried to jam him up front the line of scrimmage and missed, but you see the man-to-man -man coverage. He's going to take him to the outside, gets a step, and tries to backpedal his way in. But Price just turns on the Jets and does a nice job getting behind him. The sixth touchdown pass of the season for Josh Sun. Now they'll go for two. And he got there. So the two point conversion is good and with 95 seconds remaining, we've got a nine point ball game. Well, it's a down line option. You take it out of the gun formation. You pitch it. You can run it up inside, and that's what Josh Stone does here for the two points for the Colonels. Go back to the touchdown pass. Nice job by John Price. Really laid out for this one to bring it in. Excellent grab. Good job in the back of the end zone, laying out, selling out to make the grab. And here's the two point uh, conversion. Well, actually, that's the touchdown pass. Actually, he throws it from the gun. And he beat a pretty good cornerback, too, in Chris Brown. I don't know if Brown got caught up or got caught with a fake. It's just man coverage, and he just got beat. I think he just took one too many looks into the backfield that time. He was kind of a slow backpedal and probably underestimated John Price and his speed, who got behind him. Now you got the hands team out here for the Absolutely. Tigers, and you're going to do the onside kick thing. And here's the extra point. Down the line, you got your fullback Coletti leading. Go ahead and follow behind him, and pretty good pop there. But uh, Sun does a nice job of spinning into the end zone. So now it'll be up to John Manley to kick the onside kick. Doug Williams. Well, it's not uncomfortable yet with a minute 35 left. Doesn't want it to get any more uncomfortable right now. And that one just kicked out of bounds. That's not exactly the way they drew that up. And Grambling is going to get that. 35-yard line, and it was James Wilcox who did kick that. It wasn't John Manley. James Wilcox probably wishes I hadn't corrected myself on that. But he kicked it out of bounds, and that scoring drive, you take a look back at a 24-yard touchdown pass to John Price. And Sun with a two-point conversion. Well, it took 40 seconds. That's exactly what they needed. So now 95 seconds remaining in this ball game, and that guy right there who has played outstanding, Randy Himes. Can't say enough about what the job that this young man has done, the senior from Hitchcock, Texas. Right up the middle, that's just what they need to do. Keep it between the hash marks and Nickel State. Did they call their final timeout? They call their final timeout of the ball game. Himes, well, he's been a nightmare for that guy. Well, Daryl still got a smile on his face. That's the ever-present attitude that he brings to this football team. He's disappointed, yet, you know, he's going to tell his football team, hey, we came out here, we got ahead on these guys. They're a good football team, Grambling is, and you just have to coach with eternal optimism. That's what Daryl does. He brings his football program, and never say die attitude former LSU linebacker he's a little different than your typical 
head football coach at the college level. Well, I actually had a chance to play golf with him this summer. We played in the, the Southland Football League, had a little golf tournament uh, down in Houston, and hey, I played with Daryl, and really a fun, fun guy to be around, and not to mention that he can hit the ball a mile. He just, just, he says, am I swinging fast enough? <laughs> he, he's, I swing a golf club fast. I don't hit it very well, but I mean, I swing it fast, and he swings it twice as fast as I do, and it goes a ton. Well, he's, his father, Donnie, is at every game on the sidelines with his son, Darrell. And Donnie played on the 58 LSU National Championship team. There's a lot of community support for this Nichols State team. It, it is different from a lot of different programs around the country because you rarely see one in a town this small that they really get into their kernels and uh, get a lot of community support. It's definitely a unique football and sports environment down here in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Well, it's not, fun one. Yeah, it's not a big community. There's not a lot of people actually concentrated here. The university has, I think, just under 8,000 students here on campus, and uh, it's not a big, big community, as I said, but the people that are here, they really love this program. They love the, the university, and they get behind this football team as well. Uh, now, that will be the final timeout is Nichols State. You're going to coach to the very end, and that's the thing we, you've got. We've talked about 78% of this ball club, freshmen and sophomores, and you're going to expect them to play to the very end. You're going to coach to the very end, and they take the timeout here, does Nichols State, and that will be the final timeout that they have, last time they could stop the clock. Grambling, on the other hand, their team that rolls in here, they're on their way to their eighth win of the season. What they've been able to do with the program is pretty much keep it status quo, and that's something to be said for Doug Williams when he consider who he took over for, the man who pretty much wrote the book on that Grambling program. You tend to do those types of things when you win 408 games, and I'm talking about the legend Eddie Robinson. He started coaching at Grambling in 1941 at the age of 21. <laughs> 408 wins and 57 years later, he retired over after the 1997 season. One of his All-American quarterbacks took over. You see what they did, wins over Alcorn, Alabama, A&M, Portland State. That was a last-second win. They're only lost last week against Alabama State. Now with a minute 23, Randy Himes will take a knee. They'll have to do it, snap it a couple more times, and that will be it. Grambling a very impressive show. I'm going to go out on a limb here and talk about Randy Himes a little bit. You know, you have the quarterback position. And really had a great, great game last week at the X receiver position. I think he's probably got a future. At least he's going to get into a camp next year. I, I would imagine as a receiver position, an opportunity to play in the NFL. And that's the kind of ability that I think he has. All right, thanks to Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the Southland Conference, the Southland Football League, along with Bruce Lowe, uh, Bruce Ludlow, the associate commissioner of the league who's helped us out all season long. Hope you've enjoyed Southland Football League action here on Fox Sports. Nick, we've enjoyed bringing it to you. This will wrap up our schedule, but still plenty more to come in the playoffs. It's more than a couple Southland teams will be headed to the 1AA playoffs. I think you're right, Kevin. There's three or four teams now still in the top 25 in, in Division 1AA here for the Southland Football League. Just great football through in, throughout. Hey, and now late in the season, you're going to have your better teams and your teams with your better records playing each other. We've got some great games coming up today and, and again next week to see who's going to win this Southland Football League championship. Does Williams and the and his Grandma State Tigers there leading their division in the SWAC and uh, there'll be a championship for them possibly at the end of the road as well. A Doug Williams team goes to 8-1 and one as they're going to come away with the win today. The final score here in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Grambling comes from behind. They lead it 30, they win it 37 to 28. We'll take a final break. We'll come back and wrap things up from Louisiana in a moment. Grambling wins it 37 to 28. For Gary Reasons, Kevin Eschenfeld, and all of us at Fox Sports Net. Good to have you with us. So long from Thibodeau. Coming up next, it's a Pac-10 showdown. Number eight, Washington facing Oregon State. This has been an exclusive presentation of Fox Sports Net and the Southland Football League. Second leading tackler in the conference is Don Toge top of the show. He has led this club in tackles the last two seasons. Looks like he's going to do it for a third straight year. Third down now in two. And Kent going to throw the football.
the ball wide up for receivers. T.C. Taylor, Taylor forced out of bounds, but not till he gets the first down, down to about the 28-yard line defensively there was really 